What happened right there? Uh, when you called, I was watching some video for some different like uh, haunted house asylum okay. in Jersey, and then, I don't know, my computer was like, I don't want to do all this at once. Like, when I... <laughs> so I was like, "I," right. And then I didn't hear you, so uh, uh, I had to call yeah. you back after I did that shit. Now we're good? I hear you, so that's good. Well, that's... that's I think and, that's... And your levels are good. I think that's like 99% of it. And I don't hear you repeating, so hopefully that don't happen again. I don't have those headsets, and I took them out. Oh, there you go, then. Uh, it had to be, the he- you know, the, like the headsets with a microphone where you're talking? Oh, it was, it was coming out through it was there. probably grabbing that mic and my other mic. Gotcha. So this doesn't have a mic. Nice. Ah, uh, man, fucking, are we recording? Oh, yeah, we're, we're on, dude. Oh, okay. I just, uh, my bank, I'm like a negative $155. That's not good, bro. Uh, and, and I'm like, I can't get out of this hole, bro. It's fucking making me nauseous. So three months ago, my I noticed my insurance had went up like 15 bucks or whatever a month or 20 bucks a month. 20 bucks. So I called them. I was like, uh, can you just Car tell me? Car insurance or health yeah, insurance? Yeah, car insurance. Okay. I was like, can you tell me why it's up 20 bucks? And they're like, yeah, there was some laws passed in Jersey, whatever. Their rates went up, so everybody in Jersey went up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. What am I going to do about it? He's like, but... In September and October, you uh, you're getting discount like it's going to be like sixty bucks a month for September and October, like cause like the, like pro rate or whatever. So you're going to get sixty sixty bucks a month for two months savings. I'm okay. like, oh, perfect. So yeah, so you only pay sixty and sixty. So I was planning on sixty dollars coming out today, and the whole fucking two hundred came out, which took me a negative a hundred bucks. Oh my! God. And then something else came in. Now, so I have three things that came in that took me another one hundred five dollars in fucking overdraft fees because of that extra hundred and twenty five dollars from them that I wasn't ready for. Ugh. So now I'm like an one hundred fifty five negative. So I, I got to call my. So I looked at the insurance. It's two hundred. They took the whole amount out. Like there's no discount. So after I'm done with this phone call, I got to call them because I I don't. I'll call my bank and say, fuck, don't pay my insurance. Give me that money back, man. Yeah, that's... I, I never... I, yeah, that's... I never let any... I have nothing... I have one payment that's automatic. That's my car insurance. That's I mean, not my car insurance. My um my car, car payment. payment. Yeah, but yeah. it's not even... The, the, the bank that has the loan doesn't do it automatic. My credit union does it automatic. Right, right. So I can stop it at any time without yeah, them yeah. suck. I, I had that one time with an electric bill. Back when right. I was single, and I lived in this apartment, that, it was like a slum that my uncle owned. He yeah, gave me yeah. A cheap rent, but the there's like no insulation. Right, it was right. electric heat, and just the fucking bills are insane. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just one, just they just I had like no money back then. They just sucked out like three hundred and something dollars. Right. I was like, whoa, what? Like, yeah, yeah. If you could, like, I planned on paying that, but like on the day, like yeah, they yeah, sucked yeah. it out like a couple days before somehow. I'm like, right, right. Hey, hey, what happened? <laughs> right, right. It's not even actually due for two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I maybe would have paid it two days late. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah. Ever since then, I, I never let anybody have access to my money. The only auto pay I have is my car insurance. That's the okay. only thing that's auto pay. Yeah. That every month on the fifteenth it comes out. But this month I planned because I've been struggling. So I'm like, all right, I don't. I just have, I have three little payments coming in. I got enough money in the in the bank to handle those payments. Right. And then I wake up today to 155 negative. I'm like, what the fuck came in? So then the, the insurance came in, which took an extra 125. It took 150 dollars more than I planned it to be in the account. Yeah. So that hundred fifty dollars more was three little bills, like a thirty dollar bill, a twenty five dollar bill, and like a forty nine dollar bill. That was what was coming in. I paid on Friday. Yeah. So these were coming in today. That money was there for them. Right. But the insurance took it. So now the money's not there, and they just took a hundred five dollars in overdrafts. Also, that's so bullshit. The overdrafts. They did that to me last week, and I went, I went today. Every the, I forget what it came in. 
my cell, my cell phone bill came on and I had to get to the bank with the money that day. It right. came in at six o'clock in the morning. I got to the bank with cash that day. Uh-huh. I was like, here's the money to cover that. Three things came in. So they charged me $105 to overdraft. So I'm like, no, I'm here with the cash. I'm here. Everything's fine. Today's right. the day. Yeah. Here's the money. They're like, yeah, you don't get any gr- TDs. don't get any more grace period. If a bill comes in, it overdrafts you immediately, not the end of the business day. Yeah, TD sucks. Carrot, my wife's got TD. She doesn't want to join my credit union with me. Mm-hmm. That's why we have two separate accounts because right. I like my credit union, but my credit union has one office like my, in Central my... Jersey. So she's like, I like to be able to go to the bank. I'm like, when do you go? No one right. goes. Yeah, yeah. I never go. Yeah, I go all the time with deposit checks. Oh, I have direct. We have direct deposit. Both of us with our jobs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm I mean? Talking, I'm talking about jobs. I mean, most of the jobs I do get. Most of the gigs I do are checks. Right. No, I see for that, but it's like like my credit union. They don't. It's like uh, if you have to have at least five dollars in your account. That's right. Like other banks is like. I think I was with like some bank. It's I haven't had a bank in so long because of those fucking overage charges. Yeah, yeah. They wanted me to keep at least a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. And I literally went one time with a bill like to like ninety five, and they jet they they hit me for like like forty bucks. Right. For like not for minimum balance, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Are you like for three? That three dollars cost me like fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I was like, and then the other, then one time I go to an ATM. Now, uh, I know that, like, if I go to certain ATMs, I'll have to pay a fee. It tells mm-hmm. you the fee, and sometimes you're like, whatever, it's where I'm at, let me do it. Yeah, but then I'll your bank two, does. I'll, I'll pay 250 Like But you your accept- bank charges you one, too. Right, but I'm not, whatever. But, like, yeah, if I'm yeah. taking money, I've accepted that. No, I, I go to the ATM. Now, this was, like, a new thing, I think, that I never saw before way back then. They go, would you like to check your balance first? So I'm like, oh, yeah, tr- that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, to yeah. know what I got before I take right. out. So I check it. That's a separate can- transaction. That's not yeah, even yeah. involved in the one transaction. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you charge me 250 to find so, out? If I could take money? Get the fuck. Uh, that's when I, I took all my money out. I took like, right. all 46 bucks. Nice. And I fucking. <laughs> and no one noticed. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> fuck know. you guys. They know. You want my interest on that? You ain't getting it. <laughs> now Ponzi scheming me, whatever yeah. it is you guys do, yeah. your hedge funds, just ludicrous. Just uh, they're, they're just so schmarmy the banks. But they just gave me because of last week. I'm like, I you know the money, all the bills came in at six o'clock. I'm here at eight o'clock to put cash in the bank to cover the bills. I usually it used to be a whole business that you got to get your cash in. Uh huh. But they're like, yeah, we don't do that any longer. Nobody does. It, it, the ba- TD Bank does no longer give you a grace period. I'm like, it's usually same day. Like, the, I wrote the check. I wrote the bill today. I should be able to pay to get the cash in today. It's like their bank isn't even here to get the money yet. Right. You know what I mean? You haven't even given their bank the money yet. When the check comes in, it goes, okay, make a payment to Mike Gaffney's, you know, um, Visa card. You didn't make it yet. You just got a notification that you got to make that payment. I'm here to give you the cash to make that payment. You have nothing has come out of your pocket to do it for me. Ugh. That's like if I said to James, hey, James, go get my money from Joe's going to give you 50 bucks. And then James, I told you, James is going to get 50 bucks from you. Okay, I come to you, give the 50 bucks. I'm like, did James come yet? No, but give me 10 bucks extra, Mike, for doing this for you. What the fuck are you talking about? Ugh. You didn't give it to James yet. I'll give Fuck, I don't even need you. I'll give it to James. Um, but, uh, but they get. I call them complaining, and they gave me two of the charges back last week. They're not going to give me none of these this week. Yeah, not a week later to be like, bro, what's, what's are we in a relationship? You coming back? <laughs> <laughs> but I, maybe if I can convince them that my insurance wasn't is what did it. Yeah, maybe I can. I got after I get off this, I got to call my insurance company and fucking go nuts. I. I, I, I it's like I am so, like, I'm just peeking out of the hole. Like, and I was like, all right, I'll get a little breather, not a lot of breather, but a little breather. Yeah. So then this week when I work, I gotta pay. I gotta buy two air, two different trips. You know, off my check this coming week. I'm like, all right, I, I got a little cushion to buy some airplane tickets, and then next week I'm working with you. <clears throat> all right, I'm I'll be okay. I'm looks like maybe I'm coming out of the hole now. Right. And now I'm 105 back in the hole. Where are you buying airplane tickets to? I just want to go places. No, I gotta just go. It's to... gonna be jet setting. Like I feel like yeah. jet setting <laughs> makes me uh, makes me uh, forget about being poor. 
<laughs> Buying expensive last minute airline tickets. <laughs> I got a Jacksonville. Oh, that's October right. October. S- you didn't buy those s- tickets yet? Yeah, no, I bought them. I just feel like buying them again. <laughs> um, Someone told me something. I don't know if it's real about. Uh, no. Like on your computer, you got to clear your cookies if you search for airline tickets because apparently the website knows you return and then they like jack the prices up. Oh, really? I don't know if there's any validity to that, that, but it it takes three seconds to clear the cookies. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't doubt that because most people don't. Right. You know? No, absolutely. But no, the reason I've I've been in the hole for the summer. So normally I buy my plane tickets three months, you know, three or four months early. Yeah. It's cheaper. But I have yeah. had the extra money. I got this gig in Jacksonville five weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I've not had enough money to buy three hundred dollars. Oh money. yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. haven't had it. And I gotta buy Vegas for in the middle of October too. I just haven't had the money. Mm. I haven't had it. So this week coming up, I'm like, all right, I got a nice little chunk of change coming. It isn't great, but enough to buy two trips. Right. I know I'm probably paying fifty dollars more each trip because I waited so long. But I had no choice. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> that, sometimes <laughs> shit like this in life, you're just like, it is what it, it is. is. what it is. Fucking, yeah, man. It was a rough summer for you, I guess. So Yeah, it was. I mean, like, it wasn't as rough as last year, actually, but it was still rough. And I got to take that into account. I got to start squirreling some money away. That's what I, like... I started doing like whenever we got like those like like whenever I get a gig that pays me way more than I normally get. Yeah, yeah. I take what I normally get and put. I pretend I didn't even make that other money. Yeah, it's smart. In in the savings, so now I have like this buffer. You yeah. know what I mean? Some yeah, yeah. some sort of buffer because I'm like like especially you know like that t- like I've played places like oh my god I can't believe yeah, they yeah. gave me this. Insane. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're like I better pretend I didn't make that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. normally I'd be like I want to go get a new Apple laptop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, that's not <laughs> smart, Joe. You don't need one. I know, but I want. I have all this money now. I have money now that I didn't have the other day when I wanted it. <laughs> and now I have it. And I want it. <laughs> uh, I fucking hate money. Yeah. It's like uh, I heard like Joe Rogan. You know, people say like money don't buy happiness. And Joe Rogan one time was like, "All right, listen, you will if you're a miserable person, you will be miserable with money. But what money does buy you is it, it takes away that that pressure in life." Yeah, right. He's like, "That's his favorite part of being wealthy." Yeah, he yeah. is. He doesn't have to worry about things. Well, he says like, "I'm I'm I'm wealthy enough where I just don't have to worry." Right. And I'm not famous enough where it bothers me. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can like do things. He's right. like in the perfect lane. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like I always like say I want to be I don't want I don't care about the millions and I don't need to be a millionaire. I just want to be a comfortable heir. You know what I'm saying? Just like, a thousand heir. I'll be a yeah, thousand heir. I'm fine me, with it. I mean, I'll be a local legend. I just want to be like a I just want to be able to know that like I'm not worrying about fucking waking up and if a $60 check came in today that it put me in the negative. I don't need that. No, nah, that's I mean I mean that sucks. That's why like I work so many different jobs right. only because I remember having that like like that yeah, yeah. anxiety and I said I prefer being tired oh, to that yeah, shitty yeah. feeling. I don't care if I got to do these odd jobs to like yeah, yeah. like I do a a, a a job that basically will like pay a car payment every month. Right. And it's easy and it's like do I want to do it? No, but it's like you know what? That's that's whatever four or five hundred bucks. I don't have to worry about. Every right. Month. It's just guaranteed coming in my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Checking out yeah. based on me showing up. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, do you know? It's just yeah. I can't. I can't. I remember sitting in my old studio apartment, like, with like a list of bills, and like not even close to that amount in my checking account. And I'm like, right. How the fuck do I work? Fucking forty hours a week. Right. And I can't make these shit bills. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. I was uh-huh. so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I had to fuck it. Like, I, I humbled myself. Because that was the time when when I broke up with a girl and I was taking on the rest of the bills till the lease was up. Right. And then I wasn't ready for that. So I had to, like, go back to waiting tables at night. Right, right. Which sucked. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hated it. What I hated was, like, I, I was, like, waiting tables. So I'm, like, in my 20s. I'd say, I guess that was, like... I don't know, two thousand one, two thousand two, right around there, 
and uh, like I'm waiting tables at like a Ruby Tuesdays, and then like whatever. I'm in my head. I'm like whatever. I just need to make money to make my rent. Yeah, yeah. But like, like with people, like people I would grow. Like I'm, I'm a few towns over from where I grew up. But people I knew growing up would like come in, and I would like be yeah, waiting yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it just felt embarrassing to me. Right. To be like. I get you something to drink. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only because like I'm already out of college. I'm like, I'm like, right. What the fuck's going on? How come I can't get traction? Right, right. You know what I mean? It was just uh, so. But you know, it's just that's what I hated about being poor. The embarrassment. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm not like I'm rich now, but I'm, yeah, I I just tire myself out to not be have anxiety. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> it, man. I exhaust myself. <laughs> That's why I had to try not to feel guilty on a day like today where I'm like, it's fucking raining. I'm yeah. going to sit and stare at the wall, and if I don't do that, I'm going to sit and stare at Game of Thrones, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to feel guilty about not being productive. You know, I know. Once you, if you bust your ass, you're allowed, that, that day that you don't do anything, it's like, doesn't, it's no worry. Like, I can do this. I'm allowed to do this. I'm a workaholic, though. It's like, I can't, I feel, I, like, it, it's like too much. Right. Like, oh, let me go try. Like, let me go see if I can find more gigs, or let me like try yeah, and yeah. send a veil, try and get into a new... It's like, just fucking... Why don't you, like... I don't know if it's because I'm post-40, but, like, past few days, I'm just like... Like, none of it... Just fucking calm down. Yeah, yeah. Like, why don't you, like, look around a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Enjoy a day off? Maybe not, like, fucking book your whole fucking life away? Right. With things like you don't have to fill every fucking corner of your life to keep you out of your goddamn head. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> yeah, I I mean. I had anxiety, you know, just and I and I got a couple little other things working like, you know, to, to do to make side money. So, yeah, uh, but it's just like this week. I can't do it because I'm going away Wednesday morning. Right. So Sunday. You know what I'm saying? So like like that. It's just you need that little job that you can just fill That's in. That's the a, Jacksonville one? No. No. No, this is up in Saratoga. Oh, Saratoga. Yeah. Um, Like a couple of privates. Oh, it's then, for the comedy works, dude? Yeah, and then the weekend, some, I guess, up there. But at, that's another thing. Like I was told about this gig three months ago. Or two months, three months ago, we plugged it. I'm like, oh, great. It's a nice piece of change for October. And then when I was up there last month, he was like, I don't know if it's all going to work out. So I won't rape you on the money, though, is what he said. That's all he said. And I'm like, well, you saying that means I'm going to. You're already getting less. (laughs) Yeah. You're putting the tip in, at least, of my asshole. Something's happening in this rape. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be happy. So I come home. I told Tom this a month ago. I was like, yo, he's saying that something might not work out. Can you just check and make sure we're still good and it never nothing came from it and then last week Tom said I said next week or am, I, am I still doing Wednesday through Sun, Saturday he's like yeah it seems like nothing changed he goes maybe the Thursday gig might not go through and I'm like well find out about the money just cause I gotta know if I'm less that money where I'm gonna come in the pool you know what I mean I gotta know I can't believe people even get away with that. It's like you hold a date for someone making a certain amount of money, and it's like, yeah. well, I couldn't get done what I had to get done, so you now are out of money. Yeah, that's like but lunacy. If you told me a month, if you told me three weeks ago, and 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 Tom was able to wiggle some room, right, that's something else. But I, I mean, even if you do it the week of, I mean, there's nothing you're going to do about it. But I mean, at that, least that guy gives you a lot of work. That's why you yeah, try to forgive things like uh, that. Yeah, and but I just want to know what I'm going to get because I don't have. I don't have the luxury to go, oh, it's $400 less? Ah, cool. Right, right. I don't have that luxury. So yeah. if you're going to give me $400 less this week, I better know that because I got a ton of bills coming in that I won't be able to pay because you're giving me $400 less. Yeah. That's, that's... it. So I he need, shouldn't I... even be contacting you. You should be contacting your manager about no, he it. Do... No, he does. Oh, okay. I was asking Tom to reach out and find out if the money was right, Yeah. where the money is. I still haven't heard back about that. Mm. So my anxiety from that's there. I got this fucking insurance anxiety. It's fucking eating me up. And my bank is gonna. I'm just gonna call. Them. I, I I don't like. It's like I'm so overwhelmed. I'm like, who do I call right now to get that money back? Because as of this moment in Mike Gaffney's life, I have three singles to my name, to my oh, motherfucking yeah. name. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So who do I call right now to make that change? 
because someone fucked up and I didn't. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to throw up. Is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, that sucks, man. So sorry about that, people. That's uh, nah, you... that's fine. They like real shit. Yeah, that's as real as it's gonna get. You know what I mean? What do you From me. Do? But um, I had a good weekend. That's good. You got a last minute booking opening for Alonzo Bowden. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love I love Alonzo Bowden from the moment I saw him on last comic standing years ago. Yeah, I just yeah. Love, I just like him. He's just like yeah. a likable dude. Absolutely. Like his comedy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He does smart comedy too. I, that guy is like always doing like current event yes. shit. Yeah. Like yeah. good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Now he had some really good jokes, man. He had some some really good jokes. He said he went to his, his doctor. <clears throat> and his doctor was like, man, your health insurance is shitty. He's like, listen, man, well, I'm going to suggest if you get sick to uh-huh. get in your car. <laughs> he goes, because your car insurance is awesome. Get in your car and, like, crash <laughs> into some shit, and then you'll be taken care of. Dude, goes, that's I could brilliant. Take care of <laughs> that's brilliant. I've never – that's that's a – that's right? A, that's insanely brilliant joke. And then he's like, uh, in dental insurance, he goes, dental insurance, I don't even know why they have that. He's that's like – true. He's like, I went and I had to get a crown and everything removed. And he's like, um, they said, okay, uh, your insurance only covers the cleaning. So if you can give us 10 grand, we'll put that tooth in and polish the fuck out of it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so true, man. So basically, you're better off just getting in your car and biting on the steering wheel and crashing into a divider. <laughs> yeah. And then your teeth get knocked out. We'll take care of that. We'll put them all back in. Oh, yeah. Dude, they pulled my tooth for free and they want like two – Two or three grand to put one back in. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what happened? You <laughs> pulled it. <laughs> wasn't even hurting. You just said it was on its way out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's some really. He has some really good jokes, man. And uh, I did. I texted you that joke. He said, "Um, well, uh, everywhere I go in the country, people ask me what's up with Trump." He's like, "I don't know, man. I'm black, man. I don't know. What... Black people have nothing to do with that. That's a white white people. You're gonna have to own Trump. We got nothing to do with that." He's like, "Whenever Trump speaks." I look at white people like white people look at me when Tyrone robbed the liquor store. Yeah. Do you have anything to do with Tyrone? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a really good Is joke. he a cool dude Real? to hang with? Yeah, yeah. Sat in the room talking sports, talking politics. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Well, I remember one time, because I don't know if he still does it. He used to have a podcast a while ago. Yeah, he still does it. Uh, okay, I haven't listened in a long time, but I used to like it. And then one time, one day I'm listening to his podcast. So I'm like, let me go on YouTube, watch some of his bits. So yeah, I yeah. go on YouTube and I find some video that uh, I don't even know if he wants it up or whatever. But it's like, it, you know, like when you see like someone you look up to have a shit gig like you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. some weird like restaurant thing. Right. With, like, uh-huh. a plastic backdrop, and you could tell he don't even want to be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, it's just, you know, it's it's like one of those shit gigs where you're just like... Yeah, yeah. Like, they don't give a fuck who you are. Right. They yep. barely want to be here, and I'm and I'm just watching it all. I'm like, fucking Alonzo <laughs> Bowden even gets the shitty feeling I get <laughs> occasionally. Like, dang, like it's, it's almost like... It, it almost like... It makes you, like, hopeful. Like, yeah. all right, it happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, this yeah. guy's a... This guy's a great comedian. Yeah, he won last Comic Standing. I mean, he's probably booked. He got I fucked mean, with that. Yeah, yeah. They didn't air his winning episode. Not on regulars. They put it like on CNBC. Yeah. Yeah. The first year the black person wins. Yeah, like, Ooh. I know it's probably coincidence, but it's like, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he's a, he was a good dude, too. So I got, I got lucky for that. Like, I just happened to think I was off, and, and Tom's like, you want to fill in and open for him I'm like yeah that'd be awesome hell yeah did he did he good crowds friday two shows were you know ah, probably like 80 people saturday's first show was sold out uh-huh and s- the second show i would say 70 percent sold out okay yeah so it's fun though saturday's first friday's second show awesome saturday's first show fucking off the fuck there's oh there's, you couldn't even get any better than that it just was Insane. Yeah. Even Jeff McManus, the host, the guy who used to work there, like wait tables, and he was always like host once in a while. Uh-huh. But uh, now he doesn't work for stress anymore, but they asked him to come and host because Vinny couldn't be there Saturday. Okay. Even Jeff was like, man, I've seen a lot of shows here, man. He goes, that's, that's, this is probably one of the best shows I've ever seen. 
Yeah, I believe it. It was just intense. And that's and I've been there with a Sebastian show. Right. But this was just really, really good, man. Holy shit. Everything I said couldn't miss. When you get those good audiences, you just want to be like, why can't fucking every group of people that come into comedy venues just be awesome like yeah, this? Yeah. It's a good time. It's like Yeah, yeah. They this audience knew how to ring out the good time too from us. Other audiences want us to provide it all. This audience got it. Like we're gonna also be happy to be here. Well, it's like a conversation. Yes. Like a back and forth. It's like yes. a back and forth. You can yeah. like you you can almost feel it sometimes as you're walking in the room. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I see that at Uncle Vinny sometimes. You guys like a buzz to the room. Yeah, it's like yeah. a buzz. Like, they're already having a good time. Yeah, not the show hasn't even started yet. It's just like this good time happening. Yeah, and it was like a uh, you could tell it was like a controlled good time. It was like everybody was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it wasn't like you know, it wasn't like oh motherfucker. Like, it wasn't like you know, rowdy. Yeah. It was like oh, everybody's just conversating. Yeah. Everybody's enjoying their night. Then you walk in some nights and it's just like it's like you're walking into a wake. Yep, like everyone's just sitting there like. Hands on cheek. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, how, why? Like, it's so early and it's yeah. the night is young and we haven't even started the show and you're already disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Friday's first show was like that. And you know how people always say Friday or Saturday's late show are the worst? I don't see that. Friday. Do you no. know how people say Friday late show or Saturday late shows are bad? Yeah. I don't see. I see Friday's first show because that's the one everyone's rushed to from work. Right, right. No one's happy there. Yeah. Um, Friday's second show was awesome. They were just a great... Th- Friday's second show was so good, I thought, oh, well, the weekends can't get better than this. No, Friday's Which... second show is good. Usually Saturday's second shows aren't as good. Yeah. I, I never have a problem, though. Yeah. Well, no, well it is, is. it depends on the venue, because sometimes what it is, it's not that the, the audience aren't good. A lot of times they're smaller. Yeah. Because well, you either have a smaller audience or a hammered audience because yeah, they've been yeah. out drinking all night. Right. Yeah, you can, you, get, you get good shows sometimes. But yeah, like, yeah. I've I've seen it both ways where it's like either real small and they're not hammered and you're like I kind of wish you guys were a little bit more drunk. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, then ones that come in just blasted and they're like, yeah. ah, just talking to you. You're like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good shows. That's good, man. That's good. <clears throat> what you do this weekend? What did I do this weekend? I what did I do? My mind don't even work. I think I just did nothing. I just did continuing my early retirement from comedy, my September comedy retirement until next That's until a- this week. I, I'm back on stage two tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but uh, well, are you are you in New York tomorrow night? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm glad it's not like a rainy day like today. I like I hate having to go in the city like when it's raining. Yeah. yeah. It's like ugh. But um, nah, I just hung with the wife and shit. Went out to dinner. Oh, okay. Simple shit. Right, you know, right. Almost too. I'm almost getting too comfortable with it. <laughs> Where I'm just like, <laughs> I don't want to send the veils no more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear. You. I, I mean, I can't. Like we were. I was talking to somebody last night, and I'm like, you know, yeah. Um, like sometimes not having gigs, I mean, really makes me blah. Feel shitty about myself. But, like, the past couple of months, like, last year when I wasn't going to the city a lot during the week, I felt, like, bad. Yeah. This, that I'm not going to the city every week, I'm like, I'm like, I look, watch, start watching TV, and I'm like, I don't really mind not going out. This, I can do this. I can right. do this. But the truth is, I really do need to be out, sure. but I am comfortable not being out all of a sudden. I'm like, really, like, whatever, man. This, this is fine. What? Well, yeah, no, I get it. I remember yeah. hearing Patrice talk about it one time on a podcast, and I forget. I think it was, I don't know if it was a Bobby Kelly or somebody, but he was like, you still going to do spots, man? Yeah, like, yeah. Spots? Like, we're, we're road headliners. He's still doing spots? Yeah, like, that's a guy who's road headlining every week. No, nah, I know. But it was just. Spots. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, though, it's, you know, the, you have to do the weekly spots to be sharp, to come develop so you can do the week like it's just it's, it works hand in hand. No, so, I agree. I, I I'm still doing it. Like I if I try, I'm trying to go in at least at least into the city once a month. Right. I try to. Put, but I'm saying it's yeah. it's getting easier to not go in. Yeah. 
then it is it's getting easier for me. But I can I remember this conversation I had with Tom when he first picked me up. He's like, you know what's really great about you, Mike? You're willing to go in. You work. You're willing to work out every night. You're willing to go in the city and do spots and get better. A lot of the guys that he deals with, yeah, a lot of those older guys have been doing it for a while. Aren't they? Don't do that. They just are waiting for the VFW for Friday night, right? And like, I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. No, but no. I. It's easy to be that guy because it's like the Yankees are on. Like you know what I mean? Like it's nice. And, I, like my room is nice and comfortable. I'm comfy watching TV. I don't want to go downstairs, shower, and get ready. I, ah, I'm just going to stay home. Yeah. It's so much easier because then Friday and Saturday, it's work time. I'm like, time to, make, time to go make the money. Right, right. But the truth is, if I don't do the city, that creative side dies in me, and those weekend spots will start to dwindle, and all I'll have is those shit gigs that I don't want. Yeah. So. Yeah. I try to do it. I'm, I'm trying to do some other. I've hooked up with this uh, group in the city. Uh, they're, they're, they do like reading they, they like It's like a bunch of group of like writers and stuff They sometimes get together and like Do like group reads of like scripts and stuff Yeah yeah But they started some storytelling show Like over the okay. summer So I've been in contact with them I may do like their show in November Okay It's like a Saturday night Yeah but yeah But they yeah. said it's all like It's like there's no professional storytellers there It's like it's just A lot of people doing it for the first time So I'm like oh that's cool I'll go do that Yeah Just yeah. To like work a different muscle Right right and you know, meet some different people. Just okay, you know, fuck it. Try, yeah, try new shit to like get me like inspired. Sometimes right. I feel like I'm uninspired by like being around the same shit all the time. You know, yeah, what I, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're just like, all right, I get it. Yeah. I'm gonna take the second, the second wave of the acting class that I took with the, with um, Joanna Bexson. Uh huh. I'm gonna take the second wave probably in November. Oh, okay. You know what I mean, just to go another eight weeks of that, that really helped me. It really helped me to find a a little internal voice for acting. It helped me, right? You know, so I want to do that. Um, I'm actually writing. I, had, I I got woken up the other night uh-huh. with a with a just woken up with a story. I don't know where it came from. I just was sleeping. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a dream. I woke up and was like, I gotta fuck. I want to tell this. A story, and I just started going on my phone and putting all the notes in uh-huh. about this script that I'm gonna. <clears throat> I want to start writing a story. Cool. Just to, yeah, it's it's a, it's a probably a really. I want to make it funny, but it probably is more of a drama funny, more yeah. serious funny. But um, the gist is it's just about a, a woman, uh, like um, she's old. She's Alzheimer's, really bad. Like. Where she now was going to talk to Carrie about it too, just to get some insight on it. Sure. But she she has like Alzheimer's, where she never remembers where she's at, like never remembers the current time. She's only trapped fifteen years earlier. Okay. Like she's never here. Yeah. She's always fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like her son who died five years ago isn't dead to her. Right. Like he's still there. No yeah. one's telling her he's dead. He didn't die. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. All her, she has five children. All of them are still, you know, 45 and 35 and 50. None of them are fucking, you know what I mean? She's yeah, 75. Yeah. She's just not, her brain won't bring her there. So she wants, she's dying and she wants to have one last month with her family home. Okay. So she, she wants them all to come back home and stay with her for a month. Right. And the, the husband's like making the kids all come back home. So it's them all in their rooms. <laughs> and living like they did when they were younger, because that's where her mind is, really. Right. When they were younger, a little, you know what I mean, a little younger, and they're, they're, um, and the, the the twist of the story is like, you know, her son died, but he had a, he had a son when he was like fifteen that they made give like not be a part of his life because he was young. Uh huh. <clears throat> and they, he looks just like his dad, so they bring him in to fill in for his father, but he doesn't know any of these people. Right, right. So he's meeting this family for the first time. Uh huh. So like that's basically the story. Of Sounds him, cool. Him coming in, meeting these people. It'll be funny character that all the kid, kids will be funny. Like two daughters and three sons. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean they'll all be funny, and the mom will just be acting like it's fucking fifteen years earlier. <laughs> yeah. So and we find out about this one, this kid. We find out, we learn about their his son. Right, right. Who's only 
because he had him when he was 15. He's only 15 years younger than his dad. Take him back 15 years. He's the age that his mom thinks his dad would be. Ah, okay. So if he fills the role, she thinks it's his son. Mm. She doesn't think it's not her son. Yeah, she you thinks. Oh, yeah, she no. She thinks that that kid's her son. She never met him. I agree. I, I know my grandma thought I was her brother Chuck. Right. I walk into her into her nursing home, and, she, and they used to say like, "Just make sure you tell her who you are." So try and like, yeah, yeah spark yeah. her memory. So she's like, I walk in. She's like, "Hey, Chuck, it's so good to see you." And right. I'm like, "Ah, thanks, Grandma." <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, Grandma, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not your brother Chuck. I'm your grandson Joey. And she looks at me. She's like, "Come on, Chuck. Come on." <laughs> Come on, here, pa- pass me my thing over there. Here so there. that was her brother she thought you were? Her, yeah, her brother. And then I go, yeah. and I grab her. I go, Grandma, look at me. Look at me in the eyes. I'm not your brother, Chuck. I'm your grandson, Joey. She goes, you do look a little like Joey, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the funny. I brought a fr- I forget. What, a friend of mine was with me. I was like, let's stop right. in and see my grandma. She lived right up the street from my apartment. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, like fucking belly laughing on the floor after she said that. <laughs> you do look a little like Joey, Chuck. <laughs> she, yeah, she used to. It's but so we weird when you know Adam, someone right? that she would come in and out, but she had like dementia. Right, right. But it, it, it's very weird to see someone that's like in and out of it. Right, you're right. just like, where the fuck are you? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you want to t- see what their brain really does see. Well, because like the weird thing with her, her her sister Connie died when she was in there. Okay. But we never told her. Right, right. We're like, why? She's yeah, going to yeah. get upset. Right. So my Aunt Connie died and then whatever. M- months later, six months later, we go there and she's like, oh, hey, guys. She knew who I was. Yeah, she yeah, goes, yeah. Hey, Joey. Hey, get, you guys just missed Connie. She was just here. And, like, apparently my Aunt Connie was been visiting my grandma oh. at the nursing home. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. some weird, did you see her on your way out? She left. It's like, no. no. Right. It's like weird, like, like it, it's probably dementia, but you're like, is there angels and shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who knows? I wonder, they just, it's a, a day in their life that comes back, a snapshot of their life that they lived. And that's the day they're in. Probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd... It's a day. Like, you know, like, what, especially us. Like you start, anybody, you start doing things routinely. Like, get up, make my call. You know what I mean? You start doing life routinely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In 80 years from now, you're going to think, can I do this day? When did I do this day? Yeah, fucking deja vu, man. I get that yeah. shit all the fucking time. So she might just be reliving a day she already lived. And that's the day that Connie came, talked to her, and that's the day she's in right there. And you yeah. come in, you're like, hey, what's up? It's Connie. You see her? You're yeah, like, my, no, that's that a long time ago. My my Aunt Connie, was like, she was like this frail little old lady. I mean, like slow walking. Right. Like four feet tall. Yeah, like, yeah. Like hunched over. And one day, we're at this, there used to be like a toy store named Myers on Route 18. Right. And uh, we, it's me, my mom, my grandma, Aunt Connie shopping for toys for something. Up to, up Route 18 is Mid-State Mall, bowling alley. I'm talking maybe three miles. Right, right. Up the street. My brother Chris is bowling there. Okay. In his league. He's a little kid. So our, we're going to go shopping for toys, then go see Chris's bowling match. Right. So we're all walking around Myers looking for toys. We all come together. We can't find Aunt Connie. <laughs> so Aunt Connie, we're walking the fucking every aisle. I'm like, where the right. fuck is she? Like, check the bathroom. She's not in the. Ba- She's not here. This is no cell phones back then. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, what the fuck, man? So we're just like, what do we do? Right. So my mom's like, I gotta go see Chris. I got Christopher's about to bowl. I gotta. I was like, yeah, yeah. all right. Well, does somebody want to stay back here. And so my grandma, she was still. She, she stayed back. Right. Right. Uh, I think I stayed back with her. So my mom goes, I was like, call the store and we'll talk. Right. And uh, so my mom goes, fucking Aunt Connie. My mom gets it. She goes, Aunt Connie's here. She walked to them. Like three fucking miles up the fucking Route 18 highway. <laughs> so she, she couldn't find us. She thought we went to the bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, how off. Bro, if you saw how slow she walks. Right. Like, bro, she had to cross bridges, man. It's like. 
It's, really? it's like you should have to go through like underpasses. It's not right, right. And kind of know that neighborhoods like go through back roads. Wow. I'm like, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, bro, she teleported there. So I don't, she's got some weird fucking powers. <laughs> bro, it would take her an hour to get across the room. Right. <laughs> I'm like, how how long were we lost in the toy store? It's just like to this day, I still remember that. I'm like. I'm like, damn, I wish there was, like, webcam footage of Ann Connie walking up. Like, just walking fast, too. I'm like, she had to hitchhike, and she's not telling us. <laughs> she had to have hitchhiked. Somebody picked her up. How or f- maybe a cop picked her up and took her. Maybe, but why would she tell us that? Some nice... She's like, yeah. no, I walked here. You walked here? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Just, just like, if, I, if we ever remember the story, we're in the East Brunswick area, I'll show you the path she took. You'd be like... okay. You, we wouldn't do that at forty one. We'd be like, I'm just fucking. I, I'll steal. A, I'll steal a bike first. I'll, I'll steal a little girl's bike with a basket on front to make it. I'm not walking all the way there. Fucking not for bowling. <laughs> Fuck you. What do you nah. mean, professional bowler, Chris? Well, we were, yeah, we we're going to watch Chris bowl. He was a little kid. Exactly. Did you see the story I posted? My daughter's in the hospital, right? So, um, I didn't my, know that. Oh yeah, my daughter's in the hospital. She. Got a piercing, an eyelid, uh, the you know the eyebrow piercing. Yeah, and she got like that top part of her ear pierced. Uh huh. And got a serious infection. Oh my god! Did she get it in a place or like private? She got it in a place. Holy shit! Her whole face, her face is unrecognizable to me. That's how bad it is. Her really? face is swollen in in all different spots. It's just she looks. You ever see like like a a drunk Irish, like a like an alcoholic Irish person, like woman, who's like fucking fifty years old. She's been drinking her whole life, and her face is puffed out. Her lips are puffy. She looks like she got beat up. Uh huh. That's what my daughter looks like, just puffed up and like bait. And she's in a lot of pain. And they got her on this heavy duty antibiotic to clear the infection out of her. Yeah. So she's in the hospital. She's been there since. Uh, Those infections are no joke, man. Yeah, you when can't you, fuck- when you puff up. And my brother yeah. one time was a chef, right, at a restaurant. And he- he got some food. So I don't know, whatever. Some something into his hand, right? From right. Cutting meat, dude. His hand swelled up, like looked like fucking big sausages. His fingers, right? Back then, we we had like a fucking one of those instant cameras somewhere. There's laying around a photo of him. I'm like, dude, put put the thumb by your mouth, like you're blowing up your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a big balloon hand. She had a, her fever went up to 103. She was like really bad. So she's there until that, it gets better. So she might be there to like Wednesday. So they put her in the hospital Holy Saturday. shit. Yeah. So I went to see her. You know, it was there yesterday. Hopefully she's gone home before you get you leave. Yeah, she probably won't be. Um, so I went to, I was there Sunday, I mean yesterday. Yeah, and uh, in the same room is an older woman with her husband's there and her sister's there. And uh, the older woman says to her husband, like, she's like, oh, I, I can't believe she asked you to take her to bingo, like talking about an, another aunt. Oh, okay. And he's like, yeah. And, and then this, her sister was like, ah, it's not a big deal. If you're going to bingo, I might as well take her. And she goes, now, now the last time he took her to Foxwoods, he left her there. And he goes, yeah, I forgot I took her with me. <laughs> he went to Foxwoods with his sister-in-law oh. and forgot he took her. <laughs> and then drove her, drove home and left her ass in Foxwoods. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah. So she's like, yeah. He goes, like, yeah. The last time, yeah, I forgot I took it with me. That's why I don't like to bring people places because I forget stuff. <laughs> so I don't like to bring people places because I, I forget I, stuff. Mostly the people. <laughs> <laughs> mostly. <laughs> What's his name? The old, I don't know that guy. Their uh, names. Uh, okay. That guy. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, Steve's driving. Now Steve can't drive. Why? Well, yeah. We ain't coming home then. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? He just does that. He forgets it's, stuff. Like it's what, what he like does. <laughs> yeah. Forgets a lot of things. We can't go out with him. What does he forget? <laughs> us. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to go. Let him drive. I just, I, I, as soon as I heard it, I fucking Facebooked the mess. Like I Facebooked the conversation, like listening to them. <laughs> and, then, and then earlier, like she was like, um, he was like, I don't want to take Xanax. I don't want to take those. But she's in the hospital. He's not. So he's visiting. I don't want to take Xanax. I don't want to get addicted to that kind of stuff, man. I just don't want to get addicted to that stuff. And then I just, I can't see her. She's behind the curtain, but I hear, yeah, I don't care about that. I'm addicted. I don't care. I can't sleep without Xanax, and I don't want to. 
<laughs> I can't sleep without taking a Xanax, and I don't want to. Is what she said. Yeah, huh? like that's. Then I put I put that on my Facebook and said, "God bless America." Just, you know. Yeah. This, she said she's addicted to Xanax and she don't give a fuck. Yeah. She, you know what I mean? She don't give a fuck. I've been to the emergency room a few times, like uh, tooth pain. One time I had groin pain, mm-hmm. and uh, they like wanted like throw me pills, and I'm like, I don't want pills. I just you know, mm-hmm. and they were shocked. They thought I'm just there to lie to get pills. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like really, you don't just want some Viking and go home. We have a lot to do here. I'm like, no, my crotch is hurting. I need you to fucking look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I ripped my shoulder out, I was there, and he was like, it just happened to be so weird. Like the guy who one of the nurses that waited on me was a, in the program. He saw me at a at an AA comedy show. Yeah. So he's like, hey, what's up, man? You're the comedian. And then so I was in a lot of pain. He was like, you want to give you um, a Percocet? And I was like. I just rather not right now. It's just, you know, what I mean? give me something else for now. Yeah. And then um, I was in a lot of pain, and he's like, as I was getting ready to leave, he's like, I, I was like, you know what, man? Can I take that Percocet now? Because I'm in a lot of pain. And he's yeah. like, no, you can't take it now because you get ready to drive. He's like, we'll prescribe you five, like five pills. Yeah. And you can go grab them at the drugstore and then take them when you get home. You can't leave the hospital with Percocet. But you can go to the drugstore. They'll give you, you know, just a small prescription of five. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do that. Went to the drugstore. They would add a Percocet. Oh. I'm like, yeah, we don't have any. So I'm like, I'm going home with this pain. And I have to take it because I took ibuprofen 500. Yeah. And it ripped my stomach lining out. Where I can't even take that. I have to take an actual painkiller. can't take that That's stuff. my biggest fear. I've that in my 21 years clean. I've never had pain where I've had to take a painkiller. Mm-hmm. It's like just it's it's just it's it, like I do I you know what I didn't get I don't have a problem with it. I sniff them now so I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> I chop them up put in my cereal that's the best yeah. way to... nah if it's it's a cereal it's fine yeah. <laughs> I do heroin in cereal personally yeah. <laughs> heroin puffs <laughs> but I and it's really to be honest with you I never liked I was never a downer guy anyhow ever. And none of the pills that I've ever taken, like for the shoulder pain, like I took, got the five adventures I could sleep at night. I took them over like a six week period. I finally took all five of them. You know what I'm saying? Like it never was like right off the bat. Um, But I take Ambien to go to sleep at night because I just can't sleep solid. So I'll take that every other day or two. Um, I don't get, I'm not saying this is where I difference. I differ from the fucking psychos that say it's a disease. It's inside of you. I don't, right. I don't jump. I'm not on board with that. I do. I take the pill as prescribed if I need it. And I sometimes, even if I'm not, I need, I'm like, I can make it. I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, totally. I'm just, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of like, just, I don't know. I, I'm just afraid of like the feeling like, like I, like, you know, listen, I mean, Every time, anytime I took a drug that I abused, right, it wasn't like I abused it right away. Yeah, and it was like, but I it gave me that I, feeling I, like, oh my god, I gotta feel like this all the time. Every drug I ever took was to get high. Yeah, I never took a drug, but like an opiate though, like like when you got like like when I was younger, you got high on the opiates, and you're just like, there's no more problems in life. Got it, and then you're just like. Opiate. Like Die. it's yeah, well, thank God, because you know what I mean. That's the the problem. That's why I'm afraid. I don't want to be like. I wasn't an opiate guy, but every drug I've ever put in my system prior to being an adult was the intention was to get high. Whatever pill I put in my body, yeah. it wasn't like it was serving another purpose. It was always to get high. Right, right. So when I take a pill now, if I'm in a lot of pain and I take the pill before the pain, it's for the pain. Yeah. And usually, all the medicine goes to the pain. And none goes to the head. Yeah. You don't get high. It just takes care of your pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ambien, like I'll take it at night. The only once, like once every 20 times I take it, will I be awake and feel like I'll go, have to go to the bathroom and feel like, whoa, I'm a, I got to get back to bed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But most of the time I just, um, I take it. And once I fall asleep, that's when Ambien kicks in for me and it keeps me asleep. You know? But I don't, that feeling of drowsiness, like, that's not my intention anyhow. Right, right. It's not really why I take it. I wish I wish I knew we were going to even I wish I was to know we were going to even like broach this subject cuz I watched an interesting video last week. I wish you could have watched before um it was like one of those TED talks. 
Yeah, yeah. One of my old sponsors, the guy I did like my fourth, fifth, and sixth step with, he's not in recovery no more, shared this TED Talk with this guy. I think he's from France. Okay. About addiction and like a new way of looking at it other than a disease. And it really sounds like stuff we've talked about. Oh, yeah. And it's like a 15-minute video, but it's, I'll, I'll send it to you after okay. just because I think you'd be interested in it. But it's something I've to- I've related with totally. It's stuff I used to think about where it was like, like what 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 was keeping me clean was I found a purpose in life, and like that was like his thing. Like like a lot right. of addicts, like they don't have no purpose. Right, right. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily a, a disease. You know, he said because there's a lot of people that if 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 it was a disease, there's a lot of people that you can catch by doing drugs. There's a lot of people that do drugs yeah. every day that don't get it. Right. Like, because he, he talked about uh, Vietnam. Vietnam, it was known that majority of the soldiers were doing heroin. Right. And the, and the American government was worried about, oh, my God, now we have a bunch of heroin addicts coming home. Right, but right. But he said a majority of them came home not heroin addicts. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. they were doing heroin for years. Right. Yeah, I, I wish I – yeah, I'll send you the video, but it was basically kind of – debunking this like helpless addict with a disease right theory that's been sold right you know people like shit on it like it's like i swear the least open-minded people are people in recovery it's like Absolutely. it's like listen i'm not trying to say you have to believe it's not a disease right so i wound up deleting the video because I, I was like three comments in of like uh, i'm like never mind yeah. Never mind. Why <laughs> why throw out a conversation piece yeah, to maybe yeah. see you look at something a different way? Right. Your preconceived fucking notions. <laughs> you, yeah, Mr. Open Minding and Willing. Yeah, unless yeah. It's, has unless to, it's against me. Unless it's against something. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you fuck, <laughs> go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? It, like the guy you know had good points. Hate? Bill Maher. I love Bill Maher. Right. I used to hate his one concept of the disease he would be like disease cancer and he would go to cancer disease and back in the day i was like fuck you bill just because you don't have it don't mean you don't understand you don't un-. like you know what i mean right because I, I at the time was all about the disease thing well because it get it went against everything you believed in at that time correct but then as more as i stayed clean and did my own search in life and became a human and grew as a person right. and interacted with all of society i said you know what Maybe it's not a disease. Maybe it's an allergic thing that I have, like an allergy. Right. That whenever I do drugs, for some reason, and I don't know what the reason is, I kind of just am a disaster. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's how simple I make it. Whenever I drink or do drugs, I kind of become a disaster. And I just don't want to be a disaster anymore. So I decided I'm not going to – I'm not doing drugs. Or at the time, like I always subscribed to it. was like, okay, at the time, I was a drug addict. I did drugs every day. Right, so my life consisted of. I had no other life to to fall on. Yeah, yeah. That was the life I set up for myself. I didn't want to be a drug addict no more, so I got to recovery. Right. So it gave me a purpose. Like I found a new lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, so that's, that's. I think that that's like, like, I don't know. Like even the. I I wonder. Not that I want to do drugs or nothing, but it's like. I don't have a purpose to do drugs. I don't need to do drugs. Like, I think I was an addict. I wanted to be an addict. I right. relapsed. I wanted to relapse. Right. It right. wasn't like I abracadabra woke up and was like, oh, my God, I'm high. How'd this happen? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I definitely give validity to that. Like, I mean. Listen, when I did drugs, I did them and I continued to do them. I continued to do them. When I woke up in the morning, I thought I wasn't going to get high. And then by the end of the day, I was high. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, every day, that's how it worked. Yeah. Like, tomorrow, I am not doing this again. And I did it again. Right. And and at the time, it was so maddening because I could not figure out why the fuck can I not get high because I said I wasn't going to get high. How am I continually getting high when I fucking said I wasn't? Right. It was maddening to me. Yeah. So when I got clean, everyone around me kind of had the same experience in their lives. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck is that about? Like, we all had the same experience. And I thought it was only me that I remember getting in my car and opening my eyes and I'm paying the toll to go to Harlem. I'm like, how the fuck did I get to the bridge? Yeah. I don't even remember driving here, man. Like, it was like it took over my body. Mm -hmm. So I bought into it. We all thought the same way. And I'm not saying that there's not some truth to it. When I do drugs, I'm done. I'm in. I'm hooked. Right. That's why I don't do drugs anymore. Exactly. But my, I remember when I was with Bronca, she would be like, 
But you don't believe that, like, even without the drugs, like right now, the disease is kind of like your disease thinking. And I'm like, no, I don't. No, I'll tell like you what that, that is, because they always say uh, it's a it's a it's a self centered disease. Mm-hmm. You're self centered. Yes. Exactly. So no, it's, there's no disease working. You know what it is? Okay, you're clean. You want what you want in life. And you're not right. getting it, and you'll do fucked up things to get it, just like you're a drug addict. Right. It's you that's not changing. You're self, it's self-centered. You want what you want. You want your life to be how you want it to be, right. not how life is. Right. And that is, just so everybody knows, everyone on the planet has that in them. Exactly. You're not special. So, yes. The only difference people- is, is you don't move on from it. You blame an outside source right. for your problems. You don't take ownership. Right. You only take a lot of addicts only take ownership once everything fall, when the house of cards falls apart and there's nothing but to take ownership. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They don't like daily inventory themselves. No, but I say I just I say this that the regular society they all everyone deals with it self centeredness their own way. Some people some people realize that I can't be self centered. I got to think other people. Some people come to that conclusion in life. We as addicts. The, the, the way they get over that there's the fine print everything that you bring to an and if you bring something to a drug addict they will tell you why we have the why it's special to us fine print it's the fine print to yeah. all your answers about regular people it'll come down to yeah but with them with us we fucking get self centered we get used drugs and die not necessarily sometimes you cheat on your wife you rob shit you quit your job without another job you, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you call out sick because you don't feel like going to work. Sometimes those are the self-centered things you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not always you shoot heroin in your fucking balls. It doesn't always go to that. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? In the regular world, it doesn't always go to really bad shit. In the regular world, sometimes they're self-centered, and they do what they want to do. They cut you in line at Dunkin' Donuts because they don't give a fuck. They want to go to work. Right. That's their way of being self-centered. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just everyone does it Yeah, different. people do all... Types of shit. They're, but they they're, they punch to... their wife, punch their husband, exactly. cheat. They do anything that's self centered. Like, what about me? Me, me, me. So I'm to a... me, drugs are just part of being a self centered human. Human, yeah. But when I put drugs in my system, other unlike the other humans, for some reason I don't stop. Right. And that's my part of the human race, Mike Gaffney. I don't know about anybody else. So as a person in the human race, I have to own that of me. Right. Whatever I put drugs in my system, for some reason, I get fucked up. I don't know why, and I don't want to answer the question why. It don't matter. Exactly. I can't do it unless I want to be a self-centered dude and fucking do it and do whatever I want to do. That's a different story then. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking – I was listening to this uh, podcast the other day. It was – they're talking about like depression and stuff, and like, I, I, you know, I was, I was sitting there driving by myself, thinking like, like I know a lot of people like in regular life that are like whatever, like on a medication, depressed, have anxiety, like all these like mental disorders that like humans have, right? That like animals don't seem to have, <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? And like, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I wonder if like cavemen had mental problems, anxiety, depression. Like, I, yeah. I wonder if, like, we evolved too much where we want too many things. Where, right. like, like I think, like, like, an animal is, like, I'm born, I get raised, I have babies. Somebody eats me. I, I die. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. a very simple life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, no, oh, speaking of animals, I just want to go back to what that guy was saying. It's something important. He said it was some test done. You know, like, they give, like, heroin to to like mice and then the mice yeah. a mouse will just keep taking it till it dies yeah um he was saying when they did the same ex- he said what the, all those experiments had in common was the mouse was alone right so they did it where they gave community to the mice they bunch of mice where they gave them uh you know water and regular food and the drugs they can take yeah yeah and they didn't all take the drugs and the ones that did didn't do it till they died so that's what made them think it's about community and belonging and right. belonging to something and then like having an identity was yeah, that yeah. experiment with the mice like the when the mice were with others and had a community they weren't like give me more dope give me more yeah. dope right right which kind of remember like i remember being isolated in addiction yeah that's my the worst of my addiction is 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 uh is isolation right like at the end of my addiction like i would isolate from my friends i'm like i don't even want to be but nor did people want to be around me because i was being such a piece of shit right 
like robbing and yeah, yeah, lying yeah. and just like they couldn't trust me. Right. But yeah, but like that makes me think it's like are we fucked up because we because we have so many dreams and desires and and anxiety like you know what I mean you like this like achievement thing and like it's like we're no longer simple beings. Right. I wonder if that's like the source of mental illness. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you know we have a lot more things to uh to see we don't have. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more things in society to, to, for some people to look at and go, I don't have any of that to give you that depression. You know what I mean? Like we do, you know, I was just talking about Joe Rogan said money doesn't buy you happiness, but it buys right. you a little peace of mind. There's some people who don't have that. Right. And then you see, then they got, you know, there's a guy with a brand new phone. Like there's so many things. Like he's got brand new clothes on. He's driving a car. He's got a job. This guy could pay his bills without sweating it. Like all those things I don't have. Yeah. So it gives you another reason to be depressed. But I also still think there's that thing inside of you that goes, oh, well, that's part of life, man. Got to yeah. try to figure out another way then. Well, I think it's like trying to define, like, it's like, what do you define yourself? You know what I mean? Like, I think, like, yeah, people are lost. Like, they don't know what they, uh, what, what defines them. I right, wonder if right. that's, like, a big source of. Yeah, I, I mean. We're definitely involved, like, evolved to pass. I'm sure cavemen didn't have half the worries we had. You know, we have, you know what I mean? But they had their own worries. Like yeah, like being eaten, eaten by... Yeah. yeah. I don't know if dinosaurs were around with cavemen. I don't know if they were about them. Yeah, they did. No, nah, I think dinosaurs were way before that, man. Nah. There was no people walking around riding dinosaurs and shit. Yeah. You don't, you don't watch movies? I do. No, you never seen a movie with a caveman and a dinosaur at the same time? Yeah, caveman with Ringo Starr. That was a great movie. Atuk, Aluntulana. Remember yeah. fucking Lana? Holy fuck, was she hot. Yeah, now there was dinosaurs there, right? Yeah, but it was a fictional story. It fictional comes from something. You can just make that stuff up. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think, um, I think scientists have figured out that there was no people around there. I think I read a headline somewhere years ago that said that. Yeah, it was a that's a bait. That was a bait headline. Yeah. Or bait. I saw a friends episode where Ross said it. I don't know. <laughs> I get all <laughs> I get my knowledge from all types of things. You know, I'm a modern man. You're open minded. I'm a mod I'm a mo- <laughs> modern man that gets his info anywhere. <laughs> he sees it. I just <laughs> you know, it's just so funny. I mean I, I'm I'm guilty of it too. I'll just like kinda of believe like I'll just kind of just take anyone for their word, right? Right. So you just you totally get like why like bullshit. Just like I was yeah. at the dog park with Cody. He was wrestling around with a Siberian husky. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw the video I posted of him. I did. And uh, that was the, cool. I saw my daughter. The woman's like, uh, you know, Siberian huskies and corgis. They're kind of related bloodline. Like I'm like, oh, awesome. Totally believed her. Didn't Google right. it. I'm like, whatever. And now you Google it, and they're like, I that. haven't yet. Oh. Why not? I don't care. <laughs> That's why you don't give a fuck. Uh, no, what I'm saying, no, I just, I, sure, I just, I I'm, always... I'm starting to realize. See, I used to be very big on um, needing to know what right. the real deal is, and I, re- I don't, I don't care no more. With the, yeah, yeah, sure. That's what I'm saying. You don't give yeah, a shit. I don't need to snope everything. I need to, to point everybody's flaws out while wow, that's wrong. I don't care. Like, I really, I'm trying to just kind of. Yeah, I'm the same way when I don't care what. I'm not. I don't care enough to, to change your mind. Yeah. But I do care enough to make sure that I'm not wrapping my brain around some retarded theory. You know oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah, if I'm going off with it. Like, yeah, if yeah. I'm now, like. I don't you want know, to jump, I, you don't I, want to jump in the next If I'm making charts about Siberian husky corgi <laughs> relations. But that's the problem. You, you people, it's like, you know, like the, the bombing, you know, that happened in, uh, in New Manhattan on Saturday. Yeah. Dude, my two brothers were right where that guy was where they shot him today. Oh, really? My brother Mike was doing his sales over in that neighborhood. Okay. And my brother Chris's school is like right across the street. His oh, school was on lockdown. All? Really? Yeah. But you know how they were all saying how Trump immediately said it was a bomb? We need to keep these people out of the country, like immediately. Yeah. And, Which uh, doesn't shock me. I mean, that's exactly who he is. Huh? Doesn't shouldn't shock anybody. That's exactly who he's always been. Who Trump? Trump. Oh yeah. It'd, no, be, it'd be more shocking if he's like, doesn't make them all bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> be like, but whoa. He, but he said it 
before any official person said that was the thing they were saying. Right. Now, he said. Oh, he's he's like, I called it. I called it. Right. He said, was a, I, I don't even want to talk about Trump. I'm just saying how those kind of guys who jump in with information, they don't even have real information. Oh, yeah, they, well, but they talk so arrogantly about the information they don't even have. That's the whole the news does that. Yeah. 24 hour news yeah. cycle. This dude, this dude I work with posted a video on my wall today from The Onion. It's like right. a news broadcast, but they're broadcasting on how they really don't have a lot of information. Okay. And they're like taking it to a guy in the field who doesn't really have much to add to that. But they're right. saying it in like a news form. It's pretty, pretty really? funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, here. Now we're going to show a graph of some emails that have nothing to do with the subject. Yeah, yeah. And just like, just like everything the news does to keep you like. Yeah. Like the, but they, but they also, they love to, they love to say that they're not like, you know what? Officials aren't ready to come out with any of this yet, which is great. You know, we should get all our information before the officials come out and say what it is, yeah. which is true. People shouldn't just go, "Oh, it's this." The officials can't do that. Like, what do you want? You want your ma- you want the mayor to come out and go, "Fucking Islamic terrorists." How do you know? Oh, I mean, it's a bomb. Come on. You know what I mean? You you want your mayor doing that? Yeah, maybe he feels like it's ins- Islamic terrorist. Maybe he feels that, but he can't say that. He has well, no, it's say- weird, though. It's not even – it wasn't he even said Islamic terrorist. He didn't even call it – he said, we don't know if it's terrorism. If it's a right. bomb – listen, yep. any bomb is not detonated by the federal government <laughs> yep, is, a, is, a, is a terrorist. However, you say the word terrorism in today's society, everyone automatically says Islamic terrorism. So he didn't want to use those words until you had those words. Right. You, you had information. But what do you call it, though? What do you? What would you call it even if it wasn't Islamic? Yes, but I would be able to say we've drawn a conc- – we, we figured it out. It's not Islamic terrorists. It's a radical – it's terrorism, but it's nothing to do with – it's not radical. I can't, well, I can't, yeah, he should, he should have come out and said but this he, is a terrorist act. We don't know who because, did it yet. Because once you say terrorist act – Everyone thinks. Well, that's. Oh, oh, I mean, but you shouldn't be worried about what everybody thinks. Yeah, but you should be. As a, a leader, you don't want that ball to start rolling. No, people are mad at you for trying to make it like it's something that's, it's not, though. That's He didn't make it something or not. He just said, I'm not saying those words yet. Give me some time to get all the information. That's what we should do as leaders. I don't. Yeah. If, well, well, Hillary Clinton called it terrorism today before they you know she did in her press yeah, conference. But, I mean, after they started little pieces came together and the FBI had more information than we did because last, like even when you watched it unfolding, the news was saying how sources in the FBI are saying this, but they're not making it official yet. Yeah. So she's getting that backdoor information behind the scenes. She can say whatever she wants. She's getting information. Right. But at the time, boom, an explosion. De Blasio shouldn't be running out there going, yeah, it's a bomb, terrorist bombs. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It could be a fucking idiot who fucking came up with a one online and made a bomb. You know how many, I don't put it past a 15 year old kid to say, I'm going to try to build a shitty bomb and blow it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean automatically, but that's, so that's why I don't like that. We automatically, like a plane goes down, bet it was taken down by terrorists. How about maybe a fucking wing fell off? Just give it a second. You know what I'm saying? I like the people that like try to like put themselves there, but they weren't really there. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I walked right past that door four weeks ago. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, do yeah. know, and you were there four weeks ago. Four nothing weeks happened. Ago, so good. quit making a post that's about you. <laughs> we don't know. I, it's, <laughs> yeah, there was. <laughs> it's like me saying like, like I went to Chicago. Like, like there was like thirty eight killings in Chicago the other day, dude. I was there like four weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Could have <laughs> been me. Could have been. Could have been if I was in that neighborhood, which I wasn't. <laughs> but I'm gonna get some Facebook likes and hearts and smiles and shit. <laughs> but you know how um, they had um, you know seaside, seaside Heights earlier in the day, right? Oh, seaside. Yeah. But at the time, like by midnight Saturday night, they still had not figured out if they would connect it. Right. And you can't say, ah, well, it looks like it. Of course, I can do that. I'm not. I'm a professional. I should be able to say that. My son is 18, barely can write, okay? Yeah. He said they're connected. Like, I, I don't want your opinion. Right, I don't yeah. want the guy who works on the docks 
telling me, I'll tell you who did it. I don't need that guy. I'll tell you who did it. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that guy. I need a guy who has all the information and unveils it when it comes together. This, yes. Yeah. Does Seaside Bomb and at the same day that the, the City Bomb, does that seem odd? Listen, I get it. I totally get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But I'm t- these terrorist attacks are going to help Trump get elected. Of and and it's gonna feed that whole like they won't even say it. it I'm just saying it. It you could he could be right all he wants. Yeah, no. But it's I gonna guess. feed that whole movement. You know, see that's the, that like what Bill Maher says about liberals. He goes, they're always worried about a little dirt on this corner of the floor and fucking ignore like yeah. the big picture. It's like they're so fucking worried. Like it's a fucking word. Just fucking say it and move the fuck on because obviously you've seen that these. People on the other side take that and run with it and make you look like a retard. So how about instead of worrying about a word, you worry about the big picture? And that's the problem with liberals. That's why liberals fucking lose the house and lose elections because they're too worried about offending anybody that they get. N- they try to do too much to get nothing done. It's like that's not the battle you should be fucking fighting. Is the fucking proper pronunciation of what's going on? You know what I mean? That's why liberals suck. I'm telling you, that's always been their problem for years. I am totally against the the um, Islamic terrorism versus what is the other word they use instead of saying Islamic terrorism. What do they say? Uh, they don't say Islamic terrorism. Fundamental. I don't know. Fun, no, they say radical. Radical. Radical is the radical terrorist. Or they don't say Islamic at all. Right. I get that part. Yeah. I get. I get the Republicans using that to fuel their fire. I totally get that. And I get the Democrats. Uh, you're looking like, oh, liberals, why are you dancing around that word because you don't want to offend? You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it. I get that. I totally get that. However, I also get that people that do not – now, I'm not talking about the radical. I'm talking about just coming out and saying something that always fuels fear. They uh-huh. know that. They don't. I don't believe they need to say – well, I'm going to jump in on – because the Republicans do it. We might as well just do it. And, and as a society, forget the fact that we shouldn't just push keywords so the fucking ratings go up on the news and we can get that fear base rolling because that's all it's about. Fear, fear, fear. So why should people just do it because it's something that, that people do? They should be like, that's not, that's not the society I want to live in. I don't want to live in a society that we're always trying to promote fear. And that's what that does. When a bomb goes, when anything happens, seaside heights happened in the middle of the day before that terrorist thing at, in New York. Was there somebody on, were they on the fucking news going, Islamic terrorists have hit seaside heights? No. They didn't, like, wait until shit comes together and then say what it really is. Because what happens in the news, it's this, and then it changes, then it changes, then it changes, and then by the next day, we get the whole picture. Right, so if the news wants to do that, fine. That's what they do. They love to do shit early, but our leaders should be like, we're more professional. We're gonna take it. We are in charge. If okay, if I heard right now that fucking soldiers were coming to Maywood to kill everybody, okay, uh-huh. I can't go to my kids and be like, they're coming to kill us. Like that's fucked up. Like I'm supposed to be the guy who controls everybody. You know what I'm saying? Let me make sure yeah. they're coming to kill us before I scare the fuck out of my family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the, it's a, it, it, it don't change the fact. It doesn't change the fact that it's happening. Yeah, but it the does. The softer approach doesn't it change the fact that there is a guy that laying bombs, whether you call it te- – like, like – yeah, and I agree. Don't say Islamic terrorist. You know, it's Islamic. But it's a fucking terrorist act. If a white guy does it, if Mike Gaffney goes into a fucking Manhattan with a pressure me, cooker but, but and blows ask, it up, they can't be like, well, we don't know if it's terrorism yet. It could just be an exploded – well, the else. only reason they say don't say terrorism because nobody thinks white guy fucking terrorism. But it nobody. is terrorism, though. But you don't think that. If I say the word terrorism, that's what you think? That's what happens in your brain right now. You, yeah, say- you know why we don't think that? Because the only time we do ter- say terrorism is when it, we say it with Islamic. I we, know maybe if we would say it with some white people when it does happen, maybe it would not just be Islamic terrorism. Yeah, maybe. Well, we're not there yet. We need to be, but you got to start. See, that's the problem. Everybody wants one way or the other. There's no middle ground. I mean, yes, the right is a little crazy, but they do have some good points that the fucking liberals are a little too lax on it. They want to pretend that everybody's great when they're not. You I know what but, I mean? But that's like, that is a, 
a cynical, negative way to look at the reason why that the, the like the Blasio didn't come out and say it's a terrorist attack. Oh, because he's trying to be soft. No, he's not. He just doesn't need to cause fucking this giant fear. And you find out it was some fucking wacky homeless guy who learned how to build a bomb. But he's not causing more fear by saying that. I don't believe that he causes more fear by saying that. No, but you put by that By saying out the there. word terrorism. No, you do. He looks like a guy that has his head in the sand. No. It, he looks like, to me, like a like a guy who's like, I just want to gather everything. Before no, he looks like a very... Listen, I mean, I to me, I don't see anybody that likes him in New York anymore. Nobody He'll does. never get reelected. I, that, I get that part, but I'm talking about when he came out and talked, when anyone came out and spoke... I respect we don't know what it is yet versus it could be. Because I'll, I'll tell you this. I was watching CNN, and they had some expert on who's a former FBI, blah, 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 whatever the fuck he is, right? And he says, well, from my expertise, it looks like it's probably all connected. You know, you never know. And this is what he said. This is how he said it. He goes, you never know what it is. It could be Islamic terrorism. It could be, this is, I swear to God how he said it. It could be Islamic terrorism, radical Islam. Like, this yeah. is the second thing it could be. Islamic terrorism, radical Islam, or somebody who was radicalized. Like, you just said the same thing three times. Right. But you don't even know. He said, it, to me, in my expert opinion, it looks like Seaside Heights and the New York are connected. In your professional opinion. And it could be terrorism. But that, now, yeah. I'm watching it. I'm just watching the news. And that's what the news does. They create this thing that no one has said it is yet. But now we're all on board Hours before anyone said it is, oh, it's Islamic terrorism. Yeah, they're all connected. They said it. The bombs are all connected. This guy is an expert, of course. I'm not an expert, and I think they're connected. I'm a retard. Right. But that, it's, it, that's the terrorism of the of our age. Right. I'm you know what I mean? And I think it's connected. But I would like someone who's in charge to tell me, oh, you got all the information? What is it? Oh, now I want to listen to you. I don't want to listen to some idiot on CNN. I don't want to listen to some guy who did a blog. I want to listen to the guy who's right, but I, I think I think if you just get, like I don't know, I think you need to call it what it is. You you knew he knew it was terrorism. He just didn't know what type of terrorism. That's what he, he needs to say. We don't know if it was an Islamic group. We don't know no, what group. Say what group? We, we you know what? It could be. Uh, we know a bomb went off, and usually bomb means terrorism, right? But it could not be terrorism. It could why? Be why? How is a bomb not terrorism by anybody? It, listen to me. I'm not saying that we we know there's multiple. Listen, when Timothy bomb. McVeigh bombed the federal building, that was terrorism. That's terrorism. So I'm what? Not, a bomb? If you set off a so bomb, that's tell, terrorism. You're telling me that if I no, set off a bomb, it's terrorism. I'm telling you, you're nowhere out there that some twenty-year-old fucking kid who goes to college, who learned how to build a bomb, puts it out there. Now I'm not saying he wasn't looking for, but had no reason to do it, just because he's a fucking asshole. Not that it's not a terrorist act. But that could be just one kid who was like, fuck it, I'm going to blow up. I don't like people because I don't have a girlfriend. That is a terrorist act. But if you say terrorism, nobody's ever going to think that guy. Even 60 years from now, if we make every bombing say terrorist, if I come terrorism, I'm never going to think it's a little white kid who hated girls. Never, ever, ever. But it could have been. No, they'll think whoever is the current terrorist of that time. Right. So why not say it? I thought it was dumb to say uh, <laughs> the way he put it, he was like, it was definitely an act of intent. Like, well, no shit, a bomb went off. Of course it was an intent. Oh, he goes, it was an intentional Well, act. then don't speak till you have the info. Yeah. Don't go out there and say horse shit then. That's what I'd rather. Then don't go out. If you don't have the info, don't say it. Say, the mayor will speak when we have all the information. Right now, we don't have anything. We do know. We can't you know who will speak? The, 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 the police chief. Let the police chief speak. Yeah, he, whatever information is- he wants. We can confirm a bomb went off. That's what we can confirm. We can confirm a bomb went off. We can definitely confirm a bomb went off. Yeah. Why do I even need to say terrorist? A bomb went off. Right. Right? Do I need to say that? No. Do I need to see terrorists? A bomb went off. Many people got hurt. A bomb went off. Mm-hmm. Right? That's our confirmation right now. A bomb went off. That's what I can tell you. If you don't want another bomb to go off and you don't want to be a part of it, stay away from 23rd Street because a bomb went off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm going to give you. That's your information. Oh, who bombed it? The guy who set the bomb is the one who bombed us. Who was it? A bomber. Okay. You want me to say it again? <laughs> it was a guy who bombs people. I don't know how to fucking put that, but that's what happened. That's what we got right now. A bomb went off. He said, I kept I kept getting angry. He just kept saying, um, the mayor has confirmed that it was an intentional act. 
I'm like, that's retarded. Of course it was an intentional act. Yeah. A bomb went off. That's not confusing. Yeah. You know what I mean? At first, when it first happened, they were like, is it a bomb or is it like a gas explosion? Once you def- figure out it's not a gas explosion, you don't got to say intentional act anymore. Yeah, we know. It was a bomb. You could drop the intentional act. Yeah, that's man. gay as hell. This fucking act is going to get so many Trump voters. I already have group texts from family members saying... That's it. I'm switching to Trump. Just off this. Yeah, it's not off of the. It's not off of the, the, uh, the way they said it was a bombing. If that's the reason, then they were already on. No, the- no, no, not that. Just the 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 fact that like that, we can't be having people come in. Yeah, that, that that's a different thing. Yeah, that's, it's that's, it's 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 so it's so scary, man. This is like the scariest time. I fucking we're yeah. Gonna, we're gonna have an orange president. I that's can't. isn't that fucked up. That. Not for you, I'm saying. In general, we just had a, two bombs found in Manhattan and one in Jersey, and your biggest fear is that Trump's going to win, not the bombs. That's yeah. how fuck it. That's how scary that piece of shit of a human is. That we just got a bomb 15 miles from where we live, and we're more worried about that motherfucker becoming president. Uh, well, because he'll do something crazy. I just know it. I know it. But a- you saw... You are, I heard you talking about Bill Maher and the dirt in the pile. So you watched this week's episode, right? What, what was that? I'm sorry. I was answering somebody's text real quick. You watch Bill Maher because I heard you do dirt. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. Right. So that was on this week's episode. But I like that that one girl. I like because I maybe I am a fucking optimistic fool. I don't care. To be honest with you. I like who I am. Right. Okay. I do believe that there's so much, the system is in such, we have, you know, um, checks and balances in place throughout hundreds of years of our government that one person elected can't fucking unravel it all. I believe that. Right. However, I don't want that person representing me. And that's what we'll do. He's, his stupid fucking piece of shit words represent the fucking country I live in. And I don't want that. Exactly. That's it. It embarrasses me. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me sad that I'm going to wear a flag on my shoulder and that's the motherfucker who's talking for me. That doesn't feel good. No. That's the only thing. Will he destroy the country? Uh, I don't think so. He will divide it. I can't. I I mean, I can't believe he's going to win, but like, it's just Hillary's losing ground, dude. I hear you. She sucks a dick. Yeah, she, just, she does. She stinks, man. She just stinks. Her and her shitty outfits. Yeah, she's not the greatest representative that we could have asked for. For wealthy persons, you should get like a fashion designer friend or something. Be like, yo, we got to like. Yeah, come on. Let's take this down. What the down. fuck are we doing here, man? You look like a fucking. You look like a futuristic. You, warlord. Warlord. Like yeah. A futuristic grandma. Yeah. <laughs> but she looks like somebody who's like a futuristic, like. Like when they roll out like the president from, you know, the year twenty one oh one. Yeah, and she even has like that robot ha 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 laugh. You're like, yo, fucking, <laughs> you're not feeling very grandma ish to me. I feel like I want a grandma in chief, yeah. grandma in chief. <laughs> <laughs> you bring candies around. <laughs> you got butterscotch. You got butterscotch. <laughs> Come on, grandma. Vote you for my grandma in chief. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a fucked up time. It's a fucked up time. So I saw you watch the Emmys last night, huh? I watched it when I was in the hospital. I, I didn't even know that was on till I, I didn't was, either. I was watching Game of Thrones. Time. Then I saw your post right. after one thing. I'm like, oh shit, the Emmys are on. Yeah, yeah. Then I put it on like Game of Thrones had just won for writing. Yeah, yeah. And okay. then uh, then that dude from Mr. Robot won, and I loved his speech so much it made me want to watch that show. I left right before he came up. Ah. I, Very I heartfelt. Was, that was his first award. He was just like, you couldn't believe it, man. He was just really? Like, he's like, please tell me you're seeing this too. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's what the black, like before you turned it on, the guy from uh, the OJ trial, the guy who played Darden. Oh, yeah, yeah. He won. Oh, he won. Okay. And he went up there and he was like, his wide open eyes, he was like trying to hold back tears. He was like, I can't. Like, I just, and you could see he's like a really trained actor. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like he was just like so he goes, uh he was like until my wife, she rock she rocks my chain. Now anybody from the streets knows 
rocks my chain means she's wearing my chain. That means she's my girl. She's right. rocking my chain. That's what he said. She's right. rocking my chain. Uh huh. Right. So that's my girl. Is what he's saying. Since she loves me, she's bunch of white people chain. in the crowd like there's rocks on the chain. What so is- then the next black guy who played uh John- Johnny Cochran, he won too. Okay. But he, he was came good up. In that. He was. Good. He came up and he's married to Angela Bassett. Oh, and I didn't know like, that. He's like, you know, my wife, she's rocking my chain. And like, <laughs> and then the Game of Thrones guy came on. He's like, my wife, I don't even know what you guys said, but. <laughs> <laughs> Which Game of Thrones guy? Was that? Well, I think it was the Game of Thrones guy. The with the British, he had the accent. It was like the whole cast came up. It might not have been Game of Thrones. It was like the whole staff came up. And he had like an accent, like a heavy set guy with a British accent. It might not have been, you know, it was Downton Abbey. Oh, Downton Abbey. Okay. Their writing, their their group, gotcha. yeah, their production team. So he was like, and my wife, she does, well, I don't know what your wife, <laughs> she does that too. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, no, I watched it until that group of guys. And then I, and I left the hospital and I went to McDonald's. I came home and never put it back on. Mm. But you didn't see uh, the opening monologue. Uh, nah, I could probably watch it online. Jimmy Kimmel comes out and he's like, "Oh, the the actress who played Marsha Warfield, yeah, Marsha." Oh yeah, she brought Marsha Clark with her, right? Yeah, and she brought Marsha. He's like, "Oh, you brought Marsha Clark." He's like, "He's like, are you hoping OJ wins tonight? Are you hoping?" <laughs> <laughs> he was really good. Yeah, I've been re- reading something where he was like, "And she should get the award for most amazing guest." Yes. Like, you you actually brought the character you played yes. with you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, Jimmy came out. Like, that's what made me turn it on. Like, you have to pay 12 bucks a night to watch TV in the hospital. It's fucked up. So the woman next to me, I hear the opening monologue, and I'm laughing. She's got her curtain closed, but I'm laughing at the monologue. I'm like, I got to pay 12 bucks to watch this. <laughs> so I put it on. But Jimmy Jimmy did a great job. He was so funny. He did... um. He, his mom was there. She made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the whole everybody in the audience. So he's handing out bags, and he's like, uh, "My mom always puts notes in." And, and Amy Schumer was there. He's like, "Amy," and she's like, "She's like eating her note." She's like, oh, I, "I read her thing, yeah." And she read it, and she was like, "Oh, thank you. I really wish you were hosting it." And he, she's like, "Oh," she's like, "I uh, like the last time you." And then he she's talking about Saturday Night Live, and oh, she goes, "Bring back Parks and Rec." Yeah, she goes, "I'm your like, biggest fan. Yeah. Bring back Parks and Rec." And he, she was like, "Oh," and then. Jimmy took it and gave it to Amy Poehler. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wrong, Amy. <laughs> uh, it was funny, man. That was good. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, I usually like award. I usually watch all the award shows. I just I don't know. What, I didn't know it was on. Yeah, I should I have thought- known it was on. I've been seeing Jesse Joyce like winning his Emmys in the newsfeed. Yeah. I'm very happy for him. He's one of the nicest comics I've ever met. He's a great guy. I remember meeting him on the road early on. Probably my first couple of years, I got a gig in PA, and he was the headliner. Oh yeah, and just, and that's when I had about about ten minutes of material. Yeah, it was yeah. all recovery, right? And I knew, and we were talking, and he was in recovery. And yeah. I'm like, "Do you do stuff about recovery in your act?" He's like, "Oh yeah." I go, "Do you want me to not?" He's, right. He's like, well, "No. Why would I? Why would you say that?" I go, "No. I've heard headliners. I've had friends tell me headliners say don't do certain jokes so they can do them." He goes, "Let me tell you something. If a headliner ever tells you that's the most insecure person." Yeah you've ever met in your life and he goes and you should do it especially right. if somebody tells you that yeah yeah. he yeah. goes go have fun and do whatever you want bro him telling me that i was like um oh, i went up there like this great energy yeah, yeah yeah it was like i was like this dude's fucking and he's so funny man he is like his stand-up but like his fucking joke writing on those roasts uh-huh oh my god because yeah. I don't know if you're following him on Twitter, like at the end of a roast, he'll put the jokes that didn't make didn't it. Didn't make it, yeah, yeah. And some of them, you're like, how the fuck did that not make it? That's yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. amazing joke, man. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nice dude. I'm very happy to see him win an Emmy. Yeah, so I put that, yeah, I posted that thing about, <clears throat> I always get emotional. Anybody's like acceptance speech, I get fucking emotional, man. I'm like, because like, I'm also, not, I'm not doing the same thing they're doing, obviously, but I have a dream. I'm living the dream. And like, these people are getting, like, we see celebrities like we see them as stars in photos and red carpet but we don't realize they're only celebrities because of the success they had from doing what they want to do yeah the best ones are like the first win yeah yeah of someone you barely know 
Right. Like, like DiCaprio took so long to get his Oscar. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That I felt good for him because I'm a fan of his. I've right. I've always loved his acting, even in shitty movies. I've mm-hmm. liked him in. But it's not as touching because you're like, he's fucking living Leo's life. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> he's, he's been Leo for so long, so you're like, all right, he'll... I kind of, I'm happy for him. I know he's going to talk about the environment. <laughs> yeah, but I that, like, but I I I understand. Like, like that. the guy from Mr. Robot touched me. Never saw the guy in my life. Never saw him utter a line on TV. But I'm like, this is his first win. This is his first series. Yeah, and you just feel that he's been struggling. Yeah, those guys definitely hit you more. You know what yeah. I mean? But when when a guy who's won six Oscars and wins for a role, I know that that role is its own role, and the things he did to do that role. Like, you know what I mean? I get it. Like, we think it's just, oh, he got a script. He read some words. It's fucking Denzel. Of course he did. No, it's not that easy, man. It's nah. not that easy to get a script and make it you. Well, the great ones make it look easy. Great exactly. actors make it look easy. Right. So, but then you get the cynical people like, eh, it's fucking awards, people. Get over it. Like, you're not say curing cancers. Like, you fucking retard. Like. Nah, yeah. Just these guys, these people are putting their whole effort into that. But then that's what I like about Jimmy Kimmel. Like he does, and a lot of other hosts. They like they they definitely make fun of them for being self congratulatory. It's like yeah, these yeah. awards they're giving them to each other. Right. It's not yeah. like an outside right. <laughs> entity. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. Or what did he say? He goes, you know, um, they're they're very the Emmys are very diverse this year, and Hollywood uh, does nothing. Like something more than to celebrate how diverse they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think that's like, what, like, like my wife can like she'll watch it a little bit, but it, there's certain people I've met. And I do see their point. Like it's almost there's some that are phony, and right. it's like this self congratulatory. It's almost like you've already won, like right. in life up yeah, to this yeah. point. You know what I mean? I do not. I mean, I don't buy. It. I I enjoy watching it. But I can see the other side of it. The people are just like, ugh. Yeah. I mean, the ratings suck for them, which points it out that the majority of people right. don't watch well, it's, those it's things. More, maybe it's more inside, and I'm, I like that I'm inside. No, no, yeah. totally. No, no. I, I, I can see both sides of it. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, yeah. why, that's why I always think it's imperative to have a host that makes fun of it. Yeah, yeah. I like, like when you see them, like there was one year where they were taking the jokes too seriously. I forget who the host was. And they were like, you know, like they weren't taking it nice. So it was the Oscars yeah. one year. And it's like, no, no, man. You, people will like you more if you talk, if you joke about Absolutely. this as well. We no, do yeah. appro- we do give it up for you for winning. But you have to not be so morbidly serious oh, about no, 100%. your... Oh, no, 100%. They shouldn't be. Like, yeah, they should take it as a big, like, this is a fucking awesome fun night. Let's make fun of it. This is awesome. But the people who are, like, on Facebook and they're just so negative about it, it's like, look, man. That guy probably went through years of training. He's taken so many roles. He loves acting. The furthest, like, this is a dream. Like, I'm going to re- accept an award for doing what I love to do. Man, I cannot believe this is going to happen. Maybe one day. And then it happens, and he's like, oh, my God. My parents are so proud of me right now. Everybody's so proud of me. This yeah. is a beautiful moment for me. And then you guys say, yeah, it's fucking acting, bro. Just, oh, so you don't watch television or movies or nothing like that? You don't watch anything that we do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you look at every television show going out at just acting? Or do you watch a television show and go, oh my God, I can't wait to see next week's episode? Like, oh, you know, it's fake, right? We don't deserve that much respect. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just wasting your time. You're going to watch an hour of us? <laughs> what a waste of time. You should what? go do cure cancer, whatever it is you do every day, because that's what you do. Because we're not doing it today. We're not curing cancer. We're just enjoying the fact that we love our job. And we got to do something that we fucking can't believe we wanted to do. And you watch us every week, but not good enough to fucking care that we do this. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, but you want the show to be good because you're watching it every week. Well, that's okay. like people that just are like, oh, they can't believe they get paid to fucking act. It's like they think they could have done it, but you didn't do it. Yeah. But you didn't do it. Exactly. Okay, it's, yes. Yeah. Was Brad Pitt graced with amazing looks? Yep. Yes. But he did have to train to act to get into roles because there's a lot of good if you go to Los Angeles oh, there's a lot of good looking of men there's a billion Brad Pitts out there that look great exactly but then they go, they read the script like I want to go okay thank you thank yeah. you we'll that's what you I that. hate when they begrudge like, like I get into this argument with my father-in-law all the time where he's like talks about how like athletes are overpaid and yeah. I go I, 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 listen 
in in comparison to us, they're overpaid. But they're not overpaid in their industry. I go, if Derek Jeter's making twenty two million dollars a year, what does the Steinbrenners make if they're willing to pay one player that? Right. So you make whatever your market dictates you make. Absolutely. And I don't begrudge anybody. No, absolutely. You know, I don't begrudge actors making. I was like, who was that? I saw that center stage one day when Michael Kay and Michael Douglas is on. And he he used to want to be a ball player when he was younger. Right. Like, he was actually, I think, a pretty good ball player. Okay. But, like, his, he wasn't big enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, Michael Kay said, uh, if you can go back and do it all over again, would you like to be an athlete or an actor? If you could just choose one, you're going to be good at whichever one you chose. He goes, oh, an actor. He goes, not an athlete? All that money in baseball now? He's like, hey, do you know how much actors make? <laughs> like, are you serious? Like, I made $20 million a movie. I worked for a month and a half. Derek yeah. Jeter has to train all fucking year and play. And be good. Every day and be good. Yeah. To earn that. Like, if I act there, man, are you kidding me? <laughs> it, was, it was just perfect because he just, like, leaned over. Like, are you serious? You even... <laughs> That's like I was talking to, to Frank, you know, and Frank – you know, started doing open mics and stuff. He did one again. So he's been doing comedy. Uh-huh. We, we talked about it, and I didn't mean this towards Frank, how people are come up to a comics after a show and be like, yeah, my friends tell me I should do that. You know, I, I was always thinking about doing that comedy. So they make it sound as if what we just did, he could just hopped up there and did that. Yeah. But that's, that's the mark of a really good comedian to me. Right. Because you make people in the audience think they can do it. Yeah, that's to me an actor. When people look at him and go, "I could have done that," that's how good he was. Right. He made you think that you can do that. Right. Yeah. You know, I just the opposite with comedy. Whenever someone's really good, I'm like, I can't do that. Well, that that's <laughs> that's a, called a humble, realistic human. That's why I never like my my friends used to tell me, "You're funny, dude. You should you should be a comedian." Not like you should try comedy because I don't think it's new. Right, that right. there was a you way, be a comedian. but like I said, we used to go pay to see Richard Jenny, Robert Schimmel. Yeah, we'd yeah. go see like Brian Regan. You're like, come you on, that. And that was back <laughs> when I was naive and thought they were just coming up with this off the top of their head. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm like, yeah, yeah. are you? No way. Right. Like no. But way. that's and that's when you thought like. But that's what I'm saying. Like you were always realistic. You come. To, I, I was telling this. The point of the thing to Frank is like it's insulting sometimes. Yeah. It's insulting when someone comes up to me and says, "All my friends think I'm hilarious." They told me I should do com- be a comedian. Like do I'm it. like, yeah. I'm like, just go on stage, man. Just do. I say that go on stage, do a mic. Yeah, uh, they, they say I should do this. I'm like, how many people have walked up to Jimmy Plant? I mean, to Robert Plant, like, hey, man, my friends tell me I should bang out and just join a. Led Zeppelin. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like yeah. Oh, that good to do this? What I just did? That's how funny you are? You know, you. but on the uh, on the good on the other hand, it's a comic who can make it sound like he's just coming up with this on top of his head. Yeah. Makes these normal people think, I come up with stuff off the top of my head. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, this is actually an act I've written out and done it before. Uh-huh. <laughs> I made you think I just thought of it. Yeah. That's the sign of a good comedian, but it's almost disrespectful when somebody comes up to you and says, "I can." Do, my friends say I can do that. Uh, what I just did, your friends say, "Then why'd you pay the ticket to come out if you think you guys can just do this?" Yeah, if you're funny. Why are you coming out? Yeah, just you get your doing, friends in the living room. Should we be doing a show somewhere? Yeah, be a diner killing it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's. I could spot those guys in the audience though. Oh, the, yeah, uh, yeah, they're easy. They're just like. Fold, arms folded, folded, staring at you. Or the one they don't sometimes they don't even turn to look at the fucking stage. Exactly, yeah. Like, I I would I tolerate that at say like a fundraiser. Uh huh. Because I'm like, all right, this guy's coming for the fundraiser. He may not, but if you come to the club, yeah, yeah. to the comedy club, like you're a dick. Uh huh. <laughs> I let you go. I will not say to a guy to fundraiser. It's like his wife dragged him here. It's tricky yeah, tray. Yeah. Right. He's trying to raise money if he don't want to listen. It's like his first kid softball team. Like, Whatever. Whatever. I get it. Yeah. He's he's worried about paying for this cheerleading trip. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, we, like I'd be at Uncle Vinny's and there'll be a guy like with his back turned. You're like, why? Yeah, why'd you bother him? Why? Yeah, he's yeah. like, why are you bothering me? I go, because there's nine people here. Yeah. <laughs> 
And we're all wondering why you're facing that way. Okay? Don't act like I'm weird. <laughs> I just, I can't, I think it's, I can't like, I don't know what other industry, like musicians or actor or anybody, where someone can just come up to them at the end of it and go, yeah, my friends tell me I should do that. Yeah, come up to like Billy Joel after he plays like a two-hour show at the Garden. Exactly. Oh, my friend said, uh, I should do I this. got good fingers for piano. Yeah. My I friends sh- tell me. I should learn piano. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, it's not even like you know the thing yet. Right. It's like, that's as if you play heart and soul and chopsticks at like parties. Yes, exactly. It's like, or whatever <laughs> fuck the song I just sang. I don't even know if that's one of those. It isn't, but that's cool. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. Chops is a dun dun dun. No, well that's chopsticks. What was the one I just sang? Is that on Heart and Soul? Two of them. I don't know what. I think that's Heart and Soul. No, I know how to play that. No, 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 no. Heart and Soul's. That Heart and Soul. That no, no. Chopsticks is. Which rolls off of. Then it goes into chopsticks. Oh, does it? Yeah, okay, yeah. so the heart and soul is. Okay. It's oh, as yeah. if I played yeah. that. Yeah. Like <laughs> that I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> my friends, I know I'm 45. <laughs> my friends say if I, uh, I got fingers for this. I can tickle the ivories. I can tickle <laughs> the ivories. I'm just saying, you need an opener. Your next. <laughs> I mean, if I work hard at it, give myself a good year. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You think I can open for you at the garden? <laughs> Maybe do a little uh, piano, man a, 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 piano man with you. I could do a dueling piano man with you. We could sing happened. us a song, Mister Piano Man, the two of us. <laughs> Mister Piano Man, you yeah, start talking in his lyrics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can sing us a song, Mister Piano Man. <laughs> But do you think that's ever happened? Do you think anybody's ever gone up to fucking Robert Plant and was like, man, I could do... My friends always tell me, man, I fucking have a great voice. Yeah. It's like, oh, you could do what we just did. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you know I mean? But the comic, people will come up to you. Yeah, my friends tell me I'm funny. I just, your friends say you're funny? What the fuck does that matter? But it's so... Sometimes it's so disrespectful. Yeah. But then I get... On the other end, that like, wow, I I just made this look like you can do it. No, but the, what actually the weird thing about our craft as other crafts is even with acting to a degree, someone literally could get like if you're giving them just a few minutes, can go up and murder. Right. Like, do you ever like be at a place where like, yeah, this is guy's first time on stage. He goes up and he kills it. Like, it's your first time, dude. Now you're the best one tonight. Yeah, or when yeah, you yeah. see like the, you know, as a you've been a middle act even. Right. Even when you were just be in the middle act, you were barely a middle, and you had a great night, and they're like, dude, I've been an MC where they're like, dude, you should have been the headline. I'm like, I was yeah, the, yeah. you saw me for eight minutes. <laughs> they don't know. No, but they don't know, but you did yeah. so well. Right, right. Like, how long have you been? I remember, what was it, one time I did a convention with you, Rodney Laney was the headliner, and I right. MC'd for you guys, and I did really well. He goes, yo, how long have you been doing? I go, six months. I'm like, damn, bro, six months? I'm like, I fucking know, right? <laughs> I'll be in your spot in no time. <laughs> when people think you know you could like you can't grab a guitar never play go, like even if you knew a song you can't go play live right you know what i mean like you can't like even acting like now you could be in a you can be in a short film and be good in it right mostly probably playing a character that they wrote for you that's very much like yourself exactly it's not far but you go on a theater stage you're gonna shit the bed yeah yeah because it's just a whole new but right i think comedy could be done that's why people think they can do it right no and what we're trying to do as comics is get laughs and anybody can get a laugh at work at the break room at home depot so it's like oh this guy's funny he makes us laugh too yeah it's like, oh, because that's all it requires to be comedian is make you laugh. Yeah. I used to, my, my, fuck, I, when I was, a, my nieces were young and I wasn't a comedian, I would tickle, tickle them, tickle them like till they almost pee. Like, come on, Uncle Stop, stop. Yeah. Right? I'm hilarious then, I guess. I should have been a comedian from the beginning. Like, I, it, yeah. And comedian, it's, it's almost like I've seen this before, even at, like I remember MCing and like I'll see the, like the middle do great. 
and the headliner do better, right? right? But there was something about the middle act that that crowd liked personally. Right, right. Like now, laugh wise, didn't even come close to as good as the headliner, but they're coming up to them after, like. Right, right. It's just like this intangible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've seen it. Yeah. Yep. You know who has that intangible? Uh, uh, Liz Russo. I don't know if it was. I, I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen it on stage. No, she's. I've seen it, man. Like they flocked to her. Right. I mean, she could have like a so-so set, but mm-hmm. they don't care. They loved her. So-so set as far as probably even up to her standards. Like I didn't grab them like I wanted to. Yeah. But yeah. it's like you got anything to sell? I want things from you. Right. She's right. got like a way she just radiates. Yeah. Yeah. That like. You know, I can fucking get a standing ovation and I'd be outside. They're like, uh, excuse me, sir. You know where I can get to the next gas station? I'm like, I was just on stage. That's right. <laughs> they like, totally forgot who I was. Yeah. Do I pay you the bill? No. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. No, I was on stage. <laughs> yeah. I'm in there peeing. Like, you got a bag of mints here for us? Or, I'm like, I was just on stage. I just, I guess it didn't resonate. I guess, <laughs> you guys really forgot about me kind of quick, no? <laughs> I was telling somebody recently about my first standing ovation. It was a pretty funny story. Uh, down in Texas, did mm-hmm. a, you know a recovery show? Mm-hmm. Do great standing ovation. I'm like, oh my god, fucking standing ovation! Never had standing ovation. This fucking right. milestone. <laughs> and then you know the, the Texas conventions, they're just like they have like one meeting every hour. Everyone's in that meeting, so I go to the, the speaker meeting like after that. And after I notice after every speaker to give them standing ovations, that's just how they do it down there. Yeah. <laughs> so like I'm like ah, just totally like like I felt embarrassed for myself. I'm alone, and it was like oh my god, it's like it's worse being humbled to yourself. Like no one even yeah. around. You're like yeah, oh my yeah. god, I thought they liked me. They do this for everybody. <laughs> like I was barely a good speaker. Yeah. <laughs> well, like when they stand up at the, uh, they stand up, and you're like. Well, if they don't sit back down, they might just be standing up to leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I'm going to need you guys to sit down so I know that was a standing ovation. Yeah. yeah. If you guys just stay standing and go leave, maybe you were leaving. Like, you were never yeah. standing ovation. I've seen that at conventions where they get up and just run out for cigarettes. You're like, wow, that was yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody. Yeah. Whoa. And you just. That's the one thing that's <laughs> disheartening. Like, if you do a show and they just loved it. I mean, they were loving it. Dying. And then at the end, you're at the door, and no one even comes up to you. You're like, what the fuck? Nobody wants to say goodnight? Like, you guys just had a great... I mean, I'm not delusional. I know a good time when I see it. Yeah. And they leave, and they won't, like... They don't come up to anybody. You're like, wow, these guys are just getting out of here, huh? That's what Nick... Why Nick DiPaolo said he started just bolting after his shit. He right. just goes, and he fucking leaves. He's like, I hated that standing there. Like, just... Yeah, like, yeah. If it's all awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, it is. But some clubs want you to say goodnight to the people. No, yeah, some people do. Like, a Nick can make that call. I'm like, well, I'm not saying goodnight to people. Take I, think that in, I think they like that about him. I think that endeared his crowd to him. It's like, this motherfucker's leaving. No one even say out of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like work the, like, the right way for him. Like, Right. Well, I, I, yeah, it's a... He bolts, man. I opened for him. It's fucking... It's like literally like goodnight, foot off stage, car's like probably been on the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> He probably started the car as he went on stage. He's like, I got enough gas to last an hour. I don't want any extra time. I hope for him where he sat outside across the street under a light pole until I was done. Oh, really? And then he, you know, I guess he knew what time it was going to be. And he just rolled in, rolled up, did his show and rolled out. It was pretty hilarious to me because it just fits his personality. Right, right. That's what I like about him. He's totally who he is. Yep. Everywhere. Right. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not like phony crank right. on stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, Alonzo had a walkout. The first show, the first show Friday night, guy right in the front. I, I, I listen, man. If you listen, this isn't a hacky joke. This isn't like I'm not. I never, since I'm a little kid, I don't like men wearing flip flops. All right, I don't like flip flops on men. I just don't like it. Well, I wear them at home. That's cool. Or the beach. Fine. There's sand involved or your carpet, knock yourself out. If there's the world that I live in. Oh, no, I don't go. I, I just, it's easier to move around. I'm with you. If you're in your house and you're on the beach, that should be what you do. If there's no sand or ocean. No, you don't go out at night with them. Not. On a Friday night show. Especially with jeans rope, on. 
front. They had shorts on, front row, dressing like it's August 13th. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not. You know what I mean? It's just sitting there, front row, feet up, almost on stage, flip-flops. 45-year-old man. Yeah. So Vinny brings me up, and I'm like, right off the bat, I'm not even doing it as a joke. I'm doing it as anger. <laughs> I'm like, what's with this? Fucking flip-flops in the front row on stage? He's like, absolutely. I'm like, don't try to act like you're tough with flip-flops on. Nobody wearing flip-flops is tough. No. We know that you're not the tough guy. You're not fighting with flip-flops. You're not planning to fight that night. No. With flip-flops on. You'd be like, no. I, am I getting to it? Yeah. I don't trust the guy with flip-flops that hangs out because two things, he's not fighting. And if the, he's not running. So if the cops come, he's going to get caught. He's going to rat everybody out. He's not running away. Well, maybe he'll flip them off and then run barefooted. Yeah, he's not that guy. So I, I just was mad at him. So after my set, he was like a fan the whole time. He was like, yeah, because he was retarded and drunk. Well, then when Alonzo comes up, Alonzo does like a gun control thing. Uh-huh. Jokes. And he's like, he's like, I agree with the, listen, everybody talks about the founding fathers, the founding fathers. Goes, I believe, I like the founding fathers. He goes, uh, he's like, I agree. They have, they had they had some good ideas. I mean, the slavery thing I don't really agree with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that did it for that guy. Uh. He walked up, walked in the back, put his fingers up. was like, fuck you, motherfucker. Goes out and leaves. And outside, Vinny's like, what the fuck is your problem? Like, he, he left. He kicked himself out. <laughs> um, and he said, uh, it's disrespectful talking about the founding fathers. Uh. Uh, get the fuck out of here. You can't even admit that the founding fathers owned slaves? You can't admit that? No, nah, man. That, shut the fuck up. Me and Conte <laughs> were talking about this at dinner the other night when I went with the girls. Like, these fucking people that act like they were soldiers <laughs> for freedom. <laughs> They yeah, like, yeah. like if you like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You've done nothing. I will only take something like that from a soldier. Right, right. If you're just a dude, but even if you're a soldier, like you can't. No, you, you won't can't. though. You won't do it because you're fucking a rational person, probably. Right. But if you are a soldier, and you're like, yeah, like the guy came on my wall and was like, when I put up about Kaepernick, that like, I agree. You don't have to agree with what he's doing. I just agree that he should be able to do it. Yeah. And not hear nothing. I don't give a fuck what you feel. I mean, you could say it's wrong. That's your freedom of speech. Yeah. But he shouldn't be stopped from doing it. Right. You know, that's how I felt. Like, he just shouldn't be stopped. Right. Because you don't agree with that form. The truth of the matter, we were even talking to Alonzo and Vinny. Vinny is very white power. He is. Okay. It's not even confusion. You can tell. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he doesn't agree. He's like, what Kaepernick's doing, I understand but I don't agree with the method. I don't agree with the method. And I'm like, the truth is you don't agree with the message. Right. It isn't the method. Mm. Because if Kaepernick took a knee because there's not enough children's education, yeah, you wouldn't say shit. If Kaepernick t- took a knee because he wanted to raise awareness about there's not enough done for the pharmaceuticals industry that an EpiPen costs 500 bucks. Mm. If he took a knee for that, you wouldn't have a problem with it. Mm. But he took a knee for a thing you don't believe in. Right. And that's what you have a problem with. So at least say that, and I got you. I respect you. That's how yeah. you feel. Like, he doesn't, shouldn't be kneeling for that shit cause. I, I'm on board. But um, he but he was like, uh, I don't agree with it. And then he walked out, and me and Alonzo were talking about it. And I'm like, I put something on my wall, and, and a guy came in from the military or whatever. He's like, and his first example was like, you don't get freedom of speech. Try walking in Harlem and speaking your mind. I'm like, that's not the same thing, man. <laughs> if I walk through Harlem saying... No, it's freedom of speech, not freedom of consequences of your speech. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like, listen, freedom of speech means the government won't go after you. You can't go right. to jail. But someone right. can still punch you. Absolutely. You know and they I mean? can disagree. But like... If I went out, you have the freedom of to sue them if they punch you. There's a lot of freedoms yeah. going around. Exactly. In the whole scenario. If I went in the middle of Harlem and was like, "Hey, white people need this," I'm probably going to get my ass kicked. You don't what think they're going to my... be like, "Wait, wait, let's hear what he has to say." Yeah. No. Maybe white people do need extra things. Yeah. What was my message? What was I trying to do? Was I just trying? But if I walk through Harlem, he goes the way he said it is like walk through Harlem saying, you know, things against black people. Like, what you think? Colin Kaepernick kneeling is saying things against white people? That's what you're getting from that? 
That's what he's getting from that. That's what he's taking. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what we were talking about that in the green room. But when he went up and did the gun control thing, and the guy was like, fuck you, motherfucker. And his only thing was he was he was bothered and felt disrespected with the founding fathers. And I'm like, wow, man. I, I didn't hear him say that, but if I would have been like, what, the founding fathers didn't own slaves? That's That's what he said. Yeah, that's all he said. He said the founding fathers had great ideas. Well, people wanted to want everyone. Those people want to get over it. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, unfortunately, Alonzo's not up here making a political speech. He's yeah. turning into a joke. Right. You're at a comedy club, the Stress Factory. Yeah, yeah. Which is a weird name for a comedy club. Are you getting stressed there? <laughs> it's it's it, like a factory it, creates things. Right. <laughs> like we're going to create stress here. So Vinny brings me fucking Vinny bust my balls. Said to me, do twenty five. He goes, I'm gonna go up. I'm only doing. I'm going up quick, and I'm bringing you up, which was true. He only did about eight to ten minutes, and he brought me up. He said, do twenty five, and then Alonzo will do an hour. Deal. I go out, and Mark says, "What do you want me to light you?" I'm like, "Light me. Give me a five minute light. So light me at twenty. He said, "Okay, no problem." I always bring my clock on stage, so I have my clock up on stage with me, my phone with the, the timer. I'm going in. I'm at 25 and a half minutes, and there's no light. So I wrap up. Good night. Vinny is like out front, has to run through the doors and up to the stage. <laughs> he says, gets on stage. He's like, Mike, Mike, come here before you go. Uh, how long have you been doing comedy? I'm like, I know where he's going with this. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, fifth, almost 15 years. He's like, is it? What's the rule of thumb with the light situation? And I said, um, how long have you been on human time frame? Like, how long have you been going off the clock that we've all been going off of? Because you told me 25 minutes and I'm here 26 now. What did he say? He's like, whose name's on the sign? I'm like, yeah, the guy who can't tell time's name's on the sign. <laughs> was it getting laughs? laughs? No, but then he was like... Asked me about my website, my and he was trying to make me stay up on stage. And he's like, "What's your website?" And I was like, "Mike Gaffney Live." He's like, "What's your Twitter?" I'm like, "Mike Gaffney Now." Facebook, Mike Gaffney Now. He's like, "Why didn't you make everything Mike Gaffney Live?" Because it wasn't available. Well, are we doing this? <laughs> and the crowd was just staring at you. Yeah, and he's like, uh, "Why was your Mike Gaffney Live? Why would you make your website Mike Gaffney Now?" I'm like, "Well, it was Mike Gaffney Live because I had a webs, I had a shirt way before I had Twitter with Mike Gaffney Lot Live on it. I wanted to keep." the name Mike Me Live so I can sell the shirt. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, Mike, that was a boring story. I'm like, well, it was a boring topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right, can I? I slapped him in his ass. I gave him like a, he's like, Are you slapped me in my ass? I'm like, yeah. Nice layout. Nice. But, uh, yeah, that there's the stress. I was like, what the fuck? And then Alonzo got on. I was like, oh, you know, they were talking about the light. A lot of you guys don't know what that means. I'll give you a little... What it is, it's you get lit and you got a minute to get off stage. Apparently, he didn't realize I I was a minute over because of not getting lit. He thought I got lit and did a minute over. Oh, okay. He's like, he's like apparently, Vinny is really strict about that minute light. Because <laughs> <laughs> Mike did a minute and just got beat up on stage for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish you had audio of that. That'd be yeah. funny, man. That'd be classic audio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might actually have not stopped it I might not have stopped my recording so I might have it now I, I want to get this up today the last time you got me like the next day I can't be having you you have slow I, processes yeah because it comes up right now in the middle of the conversation oh that would be good audio and now I'm supposed to be Johnny fucking audio tech it takes me an hour to figure out how to I, do it I'll, give, I'll, I'll, I'll put this episode up tonight I'll, I'll give you up until tonight to get me that audio alright and we'll pop it in right here if it exists. And if it didn't exist, you still hear us talking right now. <laughs> 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 or you've just heard it. <laughs> Whichever. Either you just heard some good audio that Mike got to me, or if you're listening to us now, maybe not. So <laughs> there's no, that. You're still going to hear this because you're going to splice it in. Yeah, I'm not cutting all this out. Yeah, so it, you've already... heard it, and now you're hearing us talk about maybe you didn't hear it. Yeah. Which you probably know this now because you've been with us for almost two hours. I'd hate to think you 
download our episode and fast forward it to 157 <laughs> and then go. I'm just trying to see what they go at what from here. About? <laughs> I just want to see what they do from here. <laughs> you were talking about Colin Cop- uh, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Yeah, that's a good guy too. Quickly on that, I was thought we were talking oh, about at my buddy's party and my take on Colin Kaepernick. I do agree with it, what he did. I do agree with his right, mm-hmm. but I do believe that if he was the starting quarterback and not on the bench, he would not be doing it because he'd be too focused on winning. <laughs> he wouldn't want this distraction. Right. He wouldn't be doing that. I feel, I, though, though I agree with his message, yes. I feel it's uh, he's trying to be. He's, I got nothing to do, so I'm going to fucking make noise. Yeah, I don't believe. I don't believe it's strictly. Well, not I strictly. I'm not starting, but if he was, the, I might as well do it. No, nah, but a starting quarterback would not have. He wouldn't want the distraction. He would want to be focused on winning and getting these games. He may take a better, like a more mature, like approach. Like you know what, man, the team. I got to be here. I, I can't do this to the whole team and distract my whole team. I'm the head lead. I'm the head quarterback. That may be a decision making right. process, but I don't think. Well, since I'm not starting, I can cause some ruckus. I don't think that's why I did it. No, um, but I. Um, I don't believe if he was a starter, he would do it at all. That's my belief. I, he probably would have to have a more of a conversation. Because here's himself. how I know: because, because Colin Kaepernick was listen, police been shooting black people wrongly for a while now. Yeah, but black Colin Kaepernick was, was in the hand. Super Bowl as a quarterback. Had a but huge black, platform. Black Lives Matter is only a year and a half old, roughly. He wasn't. He's doing it for that. Okay. You know I what thought saying? it was older than that. Huh? I thought it was older than that. No, it's only about a year and a half. It's like either last summer or the not because it. Everybody gets a confusion of the Occupy Wall Street movement and all that stuff, kind of like plan. But Black Lives Matter has only been around for about a year, year and a half. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but I do think you're right. Not like in a cynical way of looking at like if he wasn't a starting quarterback. No, no, not I, in a cynical no, way. I believe if he was a starting quarterback, there would have been more of an honest conversation he had to have with himself, maybe his management team. Like, I want to do this, he but means- I think it would fucking disrupt the whole team. Exactly. You know, he may he may not been able to do that yeah. movement. He might have said something, maybe wore wore a little something. You know what I mean, to make it less distracting. But now that he doesn't have the starting role and the team's not on his shoulders, he's like, "Fuck it, I can sit down." But he's also putting money where his mouth is too. He's donating money to the, the cause. Yeah, he's not just doing that. And to me, like the people who say, "Yeah, oh, he should be," he's being financially more affected. Because people aren't buying his jersey, people aren't paying him to be endorsing. He's losing more money by doing this. It's right. not like he's killing it. Right. Everybody's like, oh, now he gets attention, but he's losing finances. If he really was about money, and he's on his way out anyway as an athlete. He stinks. Oh yeah, no. He's losing those endorsements anyway. That's yeah, why I'm yeah. saying it was very easy for him to do this. He sees the writing on the wall. Nobody wants him. Right. They couldn't trade him in the offseason. He stinks. Yeah, He's going to yeah. lose the endorsements anyway. Let me get a little bit of fame before my fucking... Yeah. Because no one's going to listen to me once I'm cut. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> you know he, has I mean? the pa- he has a platform now to do it. Now, at the whenever we're done with these episodes, I'm stuck yeah. with the task right. of getting the episode ready for air. And included in that task is to say what the fuck we talked about. Now, there's so many things, and I'm stuck with my own shit brain trying to remember what we talked about. So before we end, what the fuck did we talk about? Give me like three or four things. Started from the beginning. I'll try and go in order. What did we start with? I was broke. Money. Being broke. Topic one. I don't know. Uh, oh, how... Uh, this is this is What you're imitating right now is me every Monday. I had a bombing... How to, how to bombing? How, how the bombing wasn't classified or whatever. Oh, yeah, the bom- terrorism. Terrorism. Talk some comedy. Yeah, comedy. Uh, we talked about, like, uh, depression and shit. Didn't we do that? Or no? That was just a little chunk. That wasn't really a big that was That was about, uh, you know, finances and how. Oh, no, we were talking about the, the TED talk about the disease of addiction. Oh, addiction. I'll put There we go. We got four things. That's enough to... That's enough topics. Yeah, I'm yeah, sometimes yeah. sitting here and I'm like, I'm just going to put, we talk about a lot of shit. But I yeah. feel like if you put topics, it kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, but absolutely. I'm always stuck there. Like, sometimes yeah. I try to, like, I've at one time tried to, like, write down as we talk about things. Right. But it takes me out of our conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I try to, like, eliminate my multitasking because right. I'm so fucking ADD that it's like, yeah, yeah. You saw that funny thing I posted with Carrie told me the other day when she wanted to tell me a story. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you did that on stage one time, too. No, dude, she did that the other night. I was dying. I'm dying laughing on her bed. What? Say it again. Say it again. She what goes, uh, I, I basically posted verbatim what she said. Let me see if I can find that. I it, thought you told me this story one time before. No, one time, no, one time she told me, she was talking to me and told me that, uh, an alligator was eating her face. And I was like, yeah, I know. That stinks. And then oh, she was well, like, what? did you hear what I just said? Tell I me told this. you an alligator was eating my face yeah. and you just, you're not listening to me. I'm like, Ugh, what? <laughs> you told me one time she wanted to say something. She said to you, listen, I'm going to need you to, f- I need, no, she's, she's told, she's had me focus like, in the past. Joe, she's like, Joe, yeah. I need you to focus. I, need I really need you to get this. Yeah. 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 So it's usually something, but the way she ended this was, what let me hear me. She goes, uh, we're laying in bed. She's like, I have a story to tell you. But I need you to focus. I can't have you pretending to listen and then say, wait, what? To make me start over because I'm tired. So let me know when you're ready. You'll like it. It's about you. <laughs> yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> like, oh, it's about you. You'll be totally, <laughs> you'll be into this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it involves you. It was a good story, though. It did make me feel good. Oh, good. Her, her mother, I won't tell the whole story, but basically her mother teaches in Montville. Right. And some other teacher in the teacher's lounge, they got talking. And somehow the subject came up on comedy, and she goes, "Oh, my, uh, my, my son-in-law does comedy." And, and dude's like, "Who?" And she says my name, and he said how much he loved me, and was like quoting jokes of mine. Oh, nice! Man. I was That's like, awesome. "Wow!" That's awesome. Made me feel great. That it was a good <laughs> yeah. story. I'm glad I did focus. <laughs> it's like, and then tomorrow we got to go, and then you're out. Like, like... <laughs> yeah, tomorrow can you clean up the thing? <laughs> Clean, clean is a big narcolepsy word for me. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to know, can you rearrange? Can you stack the, anything that involves moving things? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. She's funny, though. My wife can come out with some doozies. Uh, like, I'll just start busting out laughing. She's like, what? I'm like, you! <laughs> she's like, that's funny. I'm like, Fucking A. Because she says it without trying to be funny, which makes it even more funny. No, she's dead se- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nothing like real shit, man. Yeah, yeah. That's some funny shit. But that's that. So let's, uh, we're two hours, man. Yeah, so, we're good. We're good. But people like it. I, I was at a birthday party yesterday. People told me they listen. That's awesome. And then a new guy subscribed. He goes, oh, you have a podcast? I'm like, yeah, all in our heads. And he was like, this one? And I'm like, yep. And he downloaded it. Right, right. Got a new listener. So welcome, Doug. <clears throat> yeah, I've been saying it too on stage. You know, I, I when I tell the story about you, uh huh. I go, my partner and my podcast partner, uh, I have a weekly podcast called All in Our Heads, so I can say it yeah. on stage, and I tell a story. The story is about you being who Stupid. you are. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right, let's get some yeah. plugs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this week I'm in. Uh, yeah, I'm in Saratoga. I think it's all private. I'm not 100 percent sure. So, but next weekend we're at Stitches. That's the one. If you're. Yes. Stitches, Lancaster, this guy that saw me in Lancaster the last time I was there a few years ago, emails me once a year, you coming back to Stitches? I'm like, nope, I got nothing, I got nothing. The guy's not even, and then I post, he goes, figures, I'm in Michigan the fucking time you're coming back. <laughs> He's like, but I'll try and get, I'll tell my friends to go out and see you. I'm like, awesome. I got a guy like that in Toledo. When I was in Toledo with Brewer, uh huh. just after the show, like, just was in, wanted to take photos with me, and every... Five months will come on my Facebook or Twitter. When you come back to Toledo, yeah, that was two years ago. Coming back to Toledo, I'll be like, listen, man, I know they they probably appreciate that I have one fan out there, but if you yeah. get your neighborhood to call and request me, that'd be perfect because yeah. they're not yeah. sending get, me out. I get that. I get a sporadic person like this. One girl always says, "When are you coming to Minnesota?" Another girl comes, "When are you coming out to back?" And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if that's enough to draw, pull me in there, like. Like, I'll ask my manager, but I only think one person barking isn't going to do it. Oh, you know what? There was a, I'll talk to you after the show about it. There's something okay. I want to... Uh, but anyway, so yeah, me and Mike will be in Lancaster uh, the first weekend of October. And I'll be at Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club the Wednesday and Thursday before that. And um, tomorrow night you'll be at Greenwich Village? Greenwich Village and then Village Lantern, you know, okay. if you happen to be in the city. But, you know, it's just whatever. Those are just spots. I never right. usually promote spots. Yeah, but if you're out and about, you want to hang out. out and about, you know. 
and that's it. JoeFernandez.net for uh, all my future dates, and you can also find uh, podcast links there. We are on iHeartRadio. If you're listening, if you're listening on like on the on the Facebook link that we post, that's nice. I like that you're listening, but download it, subscribe at iHeartRadio or on iTunes. It'll just automatically be on your phone all the time. Right, right. Um, we appreciate that. So yeah, go to MikeGaffneyLive.com, and uh, you've been listening to All in Our Heads. Mm-hmm.